My lovely, lovely imps, it's been a while. It's been a while since we have laughed at Elon Musk. Now, if you're on the internet, chances are that you've been harangued or had your ears stuffed with the thoughts and words of Elon Musk. And a lot of times it's from the mouth of, their, of, of his simps, of people who just absolutely love uh, Elon Musk and everything that he does. They love his products. They think he's the genius who's going to save the world. He's going to he's going to bring the future to us all. Uh, he's going to put a, a cybernetics in our brain that will let us, you know, I don't know, uh, play old games with our brain as if you don't already play games with your brain. I don't know. Um, but here we like to have a more critical eye towards Elon Musk. You know, uh, we followed Elon Musk's misadventures and uh, and foibles for many, many years on this channel. And uh, I, I don't talk about him all that frequently, but we do check in every once in a while. And I've heard through the grapevine that he had an interesting interview with Don Lemon. Uh, I don't know all that much about Don Lemon. I remember that Don Lemon uh, got fired after some incidents, I think he was at CNN prior, or maybe it was not. I, I don't 100% remember. Like I said, I don't really, not super that familiar with him. So I don't know. I don't really know much about his interview style. The last interview we watched with Elon Musk was one of the funniest and most entertaining interviews we've ever watched on this channel outside of the Milo Yiannopoulos interview. That one was, of course, incredible. Uh, but, uh, I've heard really good things about this interview. So I want to see, maybe together, we can find something out about it, learn about it, or maybe just have a laugh. And uh, I don't know if we'll watch the entire thing, but I figured we'd at least give it a shot. So without any further ado, let's check in on Don Lemon and Elon Musk's very interesting interview. By the way, just so we're clear, the title is Elon Musk on Racism bailing out Donald Trump, hate speech, and more, which, boy, oh boy, is that not some major topics. Let's do it. I'll lower that just a little bit. Welcome to the Don Lemon Show, everyone. We're still here. In a minute, I'm going to bring you my conversation with Elon Musk, the one that everyone is talking about. But first, let me tell you a bit about the show. Contrary to what you might have heard, we weren't canceled by X. Yes, after months of begging me, wooing me to offer some exclusive content on his platform, Elon Musk decided to scrap the deal. But our plan is, and always has been, to release this show everywhere, on YouTube, on Spotify, on iHeartRadio, just about any place you stream content. Now for my conversation with Elon. As with all my interviews, no restrictions, no ground rules, nothing off limits or out of bounds. That is until the interview ended. So what went wrong? I don't know. <laughs> well, that is a wild way to start. That is a wild intro. <laughs> okay, we are either being clickbaited really, we might be getting clickbaited really hard, but I feel like people would have warned me if we were getting clickbaited that hard. That's wild. <laughs> But my hope is that you learn something about both Elon and me, two people who come from completely different vantage points on almost every single issue. And I challenge you, Elon, to watch the whole interview and tell the world why this isn't what you claim you want on X. Thank you for inviting us here. You're welcome. Your Tesla headquarters. I, it's, I'm surprised at how big it is. I've never seen it. Yeah, it's about oh, three times. Okay, uh, small critique, that editing transition Whew, boy, is that annoying. Size of the Pentagon. Yeah. And we built it in 16 months. It's the fastest construction project in the United States since uh, World War II. So I'm here, you know, as... The fastest construction project in the United States since World War II. Okay, I, I'll, I, I, not, I don't want to be a pause, Andrea, this quickly, but um, Elon Musk has a history of making absolutely ridiculous and false claims and um also claims that are really really hard to like fact check it's like 
in the last interview, he made claims about uh, the popularity of his product. And also he made the claim that the Cybertruck was going to be the largest automotive launch in launch history. And there was just in like automotive history. And there is just no category by which that's true unless he's completely dissolved the meaning, which that's what I tend to believe. When Elon Musk makes these types of claims, it's the same as when Donald Trump goes, it's the biggest you've ever seen, folks. Bigger than any. You've never seen anything bigger. Never seen anything greater. That's, he's, he, it's, he seems to be emulating Trump's way of lying. Except, well, I guess they are pretty similar. similar. You know, the thing with Elon Musk is that he's gotten in a little bit more hot water uh, uh, with his particular brand of lying because usually when he's lying, he's lying directly to investors and or investigative um, authorities that are directly trying to ask him about the uh, claims that he's made about his projects. And I think that obviously we know Donald Trump is in hot water, but Donald Trump's situation is a little more complicated than just saying something was bigly, you know, whereas Elon Musk, that's kind of a big deal that he's done in the past is making huge claims and then not necessarily being able to back them up with evidence. Uh, I'd be interested to know if there's any truth whatsoever in his claim here, but. As you know, I'm on the platform because you are, you say you're a free speech absolutist, right? And there are no conditions. Uh, yeah. Free speech is uh, as, as much as possible within the bounds of the law. Yeah. So uh, the reason I'm saying that is because there are no conditions on this interview. You said that, you know, we'll speak to you for an hour. I don't like sound bites, so I welcome that. So let's get yeah. into it. So we're here in Austin, South by Southwest uh, is going on. We're at the Tesla headquarters. You are in the process of- I wish my Donald Trump impersonation was better, but the reality is, and by wish, I mean, I wish that it would be better without me having to try for it anymore. The Donald Trump impersonation, I have his manner of speech down, uh, like the way, but I don't have his, his tonality or anything like that. Like I don't have his, the, the, the sound of his voice, I only have the pattern and rhythm of it down. And that's the hard part with the Trump one, is getting that, getting the whole thing. And I just can't do, I've never been able to do it, but also I don't care enough to like, to like get it that perfect. You know what I mean? It's, it's just my Alex Jones. Well, obviously Alex Jones is like, that is my, that is my go-to. Okay. You know, you know, you just, you can't really, you can't get around anymore without running into goblins. The Democrats, they've been putting goblins everywhere. You wouldn't even believe how many goblins they've got out there. It is goblin, goblin, goblin. Every single corner's got a goddamn goblin and they want to take you away from God. God wants you to get brain force pills, but you can't because these tax collecting, uh, uh, you know, court document serving goblins are all over the place, set there by Hillary Clinton. moving SpaceX here, I understand? No. Uh, so uh, SpaceX has a, a massive uh, facility in South Texas where we build and launch Starship. And then we, we have um, in Bastrop near uh, Austin, we uh, are about to start production at a, a Starlink, uh, a large Starlink factory for Starlink terminals. Okay. This is a, I, I know I'm pausing right again already, but uh, nobody can ever complain about me or Obama, you know, because obviously me and Obama, we're basically on the same level of this, but I don't ever want to hear any of you motherfuckers complain about me or Obama or anybody else saying um or uh too much when this goddamn but Elon uh, Musk asshole not exists. That was, this guy, he says uh and um more than he says other words. That was crazy. Whatever. Facilities in California. Um, and this guy says he, he, he chooses to go into the public eye. Out of, he could just be a quiet CEO who has press people do everything for him. There's a million rich guy CEOs who never go in front of the public. And this guy goes out of his way to go in front of them. My God. 
as part of a launch of a news interview show that is going to be on X.com. Uh, it's coming as a media industry, as you know, is going through a whole lot of changes. Yeah. X has also been affected by that. Where do you see X.com's role in the future of news and journalism, Elon? Well, I, I think the, I see the, the X as, uh, it, it's, it's really the number one source of news uh, in the world. So it is number one. There we go again. X is the number one source of news in the world. What? That's not even possible. X, aka Twitter, barely has a share of social media engagement. It is not even fucking close. Yeah, uh, the number one way that people actually are informed about any kind of news, meaning real time events, is uh, on the X platform, formerly Twitter. Um, nah, dude. There's, there's nothing even close for real time. Also cucked, saying formerly Twitter is the most cucked thing you could have some have some faith in your brand you loser everyone knows that you made a big mistake changing the name from twitter that you made a big mistake basically with everything that has to do with twitter everybody still calls it twitter everybody still calls it tweets nobody calls it fucking x and you can't even commit to it my man god damn news so um we also want to expand upon that um and we've we have done so with the uh, long form content so instead of just doing what you call tweets, you can now do long form posts. You can post an entire essay. In fact, you can now uh, put an entire book, post an entire book to the platform. Nightmare, by the way. First of all, okay, I've used Twitter, formerly or currently known as X, temporarily known as X, whatever, uh, for some time. And let me tell you, the long posts have added nothing to the platform. First of all, they get truncated, okay? So when you're scrolling across your timeline, obviously, because otherwise the site would break, they get sh shrunk down to hit read more. And when you go to click read more, it takes you off your timeline. And often they're quote tweets, so they get broken. And sometimes when you're scrolling down, the website will auto refresh and you'll lose your place. No one is uploading a fucking book on there. And the only people who use the long post are people who are having a protracted mental breakdown. Twitter is mentalillness.com, okay? It is not a healthy place to be. And if you're posting tweets that require you to write paragraphs upon paragraphs, there's you're having an issue. Almost 90% of those posts is someone having a demented breakdown. I swear to God, okay? Oh my God. They're horrible to read and they're always, the, why? Why would you go to the platform where you look to find little quick, easy things to go ha ha at and try to read something huge? And who is drawn to try and say something huge? Okay, let me just try and explain this to you, okay? Everybody knows that Everyone at some point in their life has come across the Twitter thread that's way too long, okay? You guys ever seen a Twitter thread that's like 89 tweets long or something like that? When has there ever been a Twitter thread more than like three tweets or four tweets long that wasn't somebody having a total breakdown? Fucking find me one. Every single one is always a breakdown. It's just how it goes, okay? That's what, what convinces you that you should post 89 snippets of your mental process instead of just posting it anywhere else or filming a video or whatever or streaming or, or you know, or talking to a friend. The only thing is, is like, there's something wrong. You're in distress. You're making a bad decision. Um, you can do long form video content. There might be one exception. Uh, so do... There might be one exception, okay? And, and I, I'm sorry if these guys got caught in the blast. There might be one exception. And that is threads that are like, uh, that are like, like, what is the funniest video that you've ever seen? Here's my top 10 or top 15 funniest videos, and then they post all of their funniest videos. Those threads are sometimes gold. You know, they sometimes you get some good memes out of them. And maybe animal bots, or not animal bots, but animal accounts where they're like, here are the 20 types of ant that live in your area. And then it'll be a thread of 20 different snippets of information with a picture of the ant or a bird. 
But even still, half the time, it's better to just pick up a, a bird book, like one of these. Like, look at this thing. I have a bird book here, Birds of North America, and you can just open it up and look at all the birds, and there's like many birds, and there's all this information. It's way easier than a tweet thread. So that's the problem. That's the problem. You see, there's, there's, there's very rare cases where somebody posting more than three or four tweets in a, in a thread is a good sign. Uh, up to four hour video segments. Um, we really want news in whatever form it is, or information, I should say, in whatever form it is, to be available on our platform, whether it's short, long, text, pictures, video, whatever the case may be. Yeah, and some of the stuff that we do, long form video, interview shows, or what, or what have you. Yeah. You, um, you reached out over the summer and you said, it would be great to have Matto, Don Lemon, others on the left put on this uh, platform. You'll receive full support. The Digital Town Square is for all. What do you mean by that? I just mean that uh, we want to make sure that there are a wide variety of viewpoints. That it's, uh, you know, we always have, for example, Tuck Carlson, who uh, most people will view as being on the right. Um, and so does Tucker Carlson? What do you mean most people? <laughs> and, uh, you yeah, that's, know, that's a quite, a, quite a prominent uh, name on the right. We want to have uh, prominent names on the left as well uh, to provide uh, different views of points of view. Uh, as well as centrist, just basically a wide range of, of viewpoints on the platform so users can uh, hear different opinions. Uh, you know, they can he hear, you know, what is, what's your point of view, what's Tucker's point of view, and make the, and, you know, and people can make their own decision. You know, the neckbeard look is a real decision by Elon. I, uh, I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand why he went with the neckbeard. Like, I'm not saying I'm not saying that there's never been anyone who's been able to do a neck beard. Like I'm pretty sure that one of the like seven dwarves from Snow White, like I think that um I think one of them has a neck beard and he looks okay, but he's also like a, a, a funny little dwarf, you know? That's a chin strap? It's not. All of the beard is on the neck. He only has a minimum on his chin. Most of it's on the neck. The neck beard is not a, it's not a, it's not a good beard type, okay? Like, it's just not. And I don't know why you would choose right before going to your fancy big profile interview, you would choose to have the neck beard. I'm just, I'm just sorry. I don't understand it. I don't get it. ...about what they what they believe. You didn't mean that I'm on the left? Did you think that? I thought you were on the left, but yeah. I don't know. I'm used to, yeah. well, let's just say, I don't know what the left is or the right is, frankly, these days, because things can be quite polarized. But you seem, my impression was that you're, uh, you're, you're, you're be more likely to be described as on the left than the right. Uh, my, my sense is you're sort of center left. I don't know, you tell me. Well, did you ever watch me on CNN or did you watch I saw me? I saw say, say, yeah. But yeah, not, I saw segments. Yeah. But CNN is generally considered left. Yeah. Why do you say that? Oh. What, why do I say CNN is generally considered left? Uh, I think if, if you look at any sort of media survey of what is on the left or right, I think they would say, like, for example, Fox is on the right and CNN is on the left. Yeah. Sorry, dude. Nah. You know who says CNN is on the left? Far right people. No one on the left except CNN is left. Okay, not even a little bit. Not even, not even close. Okay, even most liberals will not accept CNN as on the left because they're not. No one in their right mind would 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 say that CNN is on the left. That's absurd. It's it's really funny. I love. I love these types of interviews when people ask a question that simple, a simple question. Just explain to me why you think that. Because it's so telling. Just, well, you know, most people would say that. That's why you think that? It's just because most people would say that? I don't know. Let's see. Let's see what else he comes up with.
So that's what is it? Am I missing something here? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Are you missing something? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I think that when, you, when, when I read that, I said, like many uh, of my critics or detractors, they never really watched me on CNN. They just saw the clips of me either on social media or maybe on Fox News or a conservative media yeah. where it's sort of a, where I've become a character or a caricature of what I actually am and it's taken out of context. Uh, sure. Well, how would you describe yourself? Um, I would describe myself as someone who is, I, I, I am independent in my thinking okay. and I vote for people based on the issues and how I feel about it, not necessarily because uh, of uh, political leaning of some sort. Well, I agree with that approach. I think that's generally how, yeah. how people should uh, you know, take things, which is, I mean, the Do you really? Because it really doesn't seem like that, given what you were saying before. And also, it's kind of a bit of a self-report that he's like, yeah, we have tons of right-wingers on Twitter. Like, he always likes to deny that that's the case, but the reality is that um, fairly rapidly, Twitter has become a a, a right-wing, far-right cesspit. And in fact, you can see this very easily if you just look at the replies of any tweet that that gets that gets any ground. The blue checks, the people who are the dyed-in-the-wool supporters of uh, of Twitter, they will be they will be openly declaring their right-wing sentiments. They're not they're not ashamed of it. There are a whole sort of set of issues which are sort of somewhat arbitrarily bucketed into right or left. Yeah. Um, but I think most, I think most citizens uh, would think that uh, they, they would agree with some things on the left, but not everything, or they agree on some things on the right, but not everything. Um, so uh, that's that's what um, I think most people will feel, I guess. How much longer? What an empty response. Why do you think this? Most people think this. Most people think that. Oh, man. I think we're starting to get to the point of Elon Musk's life where we where it starts to become apparent, like how much he's hollowed himself out and and how much how afraid he really is uh, of what of what of who he is and what he actually represents. It's actually wild to spend an entire response just deferring to what you think people think. I would almost, res I think I would respect him more if he just said, uh, yeah, CNN is a bunch of leftist hacks. I think I would respect that more because at least he'd be saying what he actually believes. Whereas right now he's just kind of like, like shuddering and going, well, well, you, you know, most people think CNN is the left. It's like, he's not even brave enough to have his own opinion. He has to be backed up. It's like the need that the need to be seen as cool or something. And maybe maybe the answer is forever. How much longer are we going to have to call it the formally known as Twitter? I mean, even Prince went back to Prince Got instead him. of. Is it always going to be X? It's definitely always going to be X. So X is going through. Some you just said he got it. He got his ass. Don Lemon got his ass. He called him out. Got him. Changes is a lot um, of, of media companies are going through some changes. It's it, you're in charge of an incredible platform, Elon. How do you feel that's going? I think it's going pretty well so far. Um. Bruh, come on. Come on. Own it. Own up to it. Dude, it's going terribly. Everyone knows it's going terribly. You said in your last... Hold on a second. Let's do a quick flashback. In the last interview we watched on this channel, go check it out. It's right on my front page. Just go to my demon mama, youtube.com forward slash C forward slash demon mama. Go look at my previous interview in which he says, Twitter is going to die and it's going to be your fault, Disney. Disney killed Twitter. The wokes killed Twitter. Dude, it's not going good. Mad copium. We're seeing record usage. Um, we've added a tremendous amount of functionality. I mentioned the... Uh, uh, that. Oh, record usage is so funny to me. Oh, man, that's such a funny metric. Retro, oh, the, oh, I love it. The nothing burgers. We're seeing record usage. What does that mean? Uh, more bots logging in, more people clicking, more people having to refresh the page. 
uh, oh wait, that's right, you, you've changed all the metrics that you measure, so you don't measure like engagements anymore, you don't measure when someone retweets or replies, instead you measure views, which views happen as you're scrolling through, sometimes completely ignoring things, and that's like 700 engagements, because you saw 700 things as you were blasting through trying to find one thing to look at. Yeah, push my pussy in bio three times under every single reply. Record usage! You know, it used to be that you could only do short, you know, text and video a picture or something like that, short video. Um, but now you can do long form text, long form video. Uh, we've added- And it sucks. The long form video will reset itself and, and forget your position in the video. Long form video on Twitter is unwatchable it's genuinely unwatchable and no what and long form text is the opposite of what twitter's design was for nobody wanted long form text on twitter and you could do long form text on twitter if you needed to by using a tool like a twit longer it was tech it was possible or by posting an image of what you wanted to say so stupid so stupid an audio video calling uh, so you can not, not just do text DMs, you can do auto video calling. Um, we improved the algorithm, I think, significantly. The audio and video calling that exposes your IP address? Yeah, amazing. Um, and um, made the system faster and better and best reflected in the increased uh, usage. So yeah. let's talk about that because you said you wanted all points of view, right? It's, it's a digital town square for all. Yeah. It's the, the, the platform has kind of picked up where conservative media, some conservative media has left off, um, that moving to the right, increasingly becoming part of a conservative dialogue, and sometimes even conspiracy theories, right? There was an article recently written about you saying that you, Donald Trump, and X were the most important um, people uh, or places or whatever icons when it comes to the MAGA movement. Do you agree with that? How do you feel about that? Uh, well, I mean, there are nonsense articles written all the time, and I certainly wouldn't agree with that one. I put it in the nonsense category. So uh, the, 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 the objective fact of the matter, in my opinion, was that, um, that old Twitter was a, a fundamentally a, tw a tool of the, the far left. As far, and that was uh, really, I think, a lot of it was due to being located in San Francisco, Berkeley. Um, and so uh, it wanted to essentially project the SF Berkeley uh, political dogma worldwide. Oh my man. So his response, his response to this question is, well, before it was, it was magnifying left-wing propaganda worldwide. So I fixed it by making it magnify right-wing propaganda worldwide. Dude, this guy is so bad at what he does. This guy is so bad at this. He might be he might be the record holder for the worst the worst interview subject we've ever seen. I think it was far left. Yes, I do. I, I used to get I actually <laughs> got off the platform because I would get so much hate tweets when it when it was called in so much hate tweets and and just guff from right wing conspiracy theorists being called everything from you know fag to sure. Well, it's the, it's the internet, everything. you know, that people will do. I mean, I've been called every name. Times a thousand. Yeah. Wow, I didn't know. I, I, I mean, he did say it was uncensored. So there you have it. Do you agree that it's right now and that even no. it's moved into sort of MAGA no, land I conspiracy I theory? I certainly don't think it's right. Um, the Dude, come on. Just, just be honest for one second. You just said it was two seconds ago. But but also we all can see it. Everyone can fucking see it. The old school Twitter uh, sus sus suspended and suppressed uh, accounts that you'd call on the right ten times more than they did an account on the left. And even when they did suspend an account on the left, uh, it was because of arguments between two people on the left. Uh, the political donations of old Twitter were ninety nine percent Democrat. Does that sound left right left wing or right wing to you? The Twitter donations. Yes. You yeah. know when they look at donations by, from a company? If a company donates nine, literally 99% of all donations onto Democrats, does that strike you as a left-leaning or a right-leaning Oh, you company? mean the company donated. I understand what you're and saying. What I'm trying to tell you is that uh, oh, he moves Twitter right employees, on from that. people at Twitter, their political donations 
were ninety nine percent, literally ninety nine percent, to Democrats. That's obviously an extremely left leaning group. My question too. I mean, there are a lot of Democrats who are not left leaning. I mean, who are left leaning, but that are not extremely left. In fact, there are a ton of of Democrats who are right who are right leaning. Uh, there are plenty of Democrats who are like left leaning, but how far is a big different thing? And also, that's not a really good metric, right? Like saying that people who work at Twitter uh, themselves um, give donations to the Democrats, d that doesn't mean anything necessarily about the content. That's just saying one thing and implying that the other must be true. But we can't fact check all this shit. That's just a terrible argument. Also, the real thing is why is he struggling so hard? These are so far fairly simple questions. Uh, some of them are a little bit inconvenient, I guess, to answer, but they're not very hard. And he is struggling. It sounds like he's like slurring a lot. And I don't know. He doesn't do... He, he's The thing about Elon is that his his manner of speech is very inconsistent from interview to interview. And in this one, you know, it's pretty slurry. I'm a little worried about Leading this Leading into this is about MAGA. You, and speaking of MAGA, you recently met with Donald Trump in Florida. What did you guys talk about? Uh, I was at a dinner, I, I was not done, I was at a breakfast at a friend's place and Donald Trump came by, that's it. So you didn't go there to meet him? I, no, I went to a, a, a friend of mine's a house uh, and it said, it said Donald Trump's coming by for breakfast. Is that uh, just so you know? Like, okay, fine. What'd you discuss? I've, I do. <laughs> um, let's just say uh, I, he did most of the talking. What? Did he say? <laughs> <laughs> what just, did he... and, and the, the normal things he says. There was nothing particularly gra 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 groundbreaking or new. But uh, he. Yeah. Wow. That was, that was a short circuit. And also, like, we know, we know Donald Trump said some things. If he's got to scramble that hard to be like, he didn't say anything, really. You know, uh, President Trump likes to talk. And so he talked. I, I, I don't recall him saying anything that he hasn't said publicly. Uh, and that was it. It was just a breakfast. Did he ask you for money? You didn't. Did he ask you for a donation? No. He didn't. No. You said you're not going to donate to any candidate. That's correct. Why not? I think... Uh, well, I'll, I'll voice my opinion. Um, I think uh, I don't want to put uh, a thumb on the scale monetarily. Uh, that uh, is, you know, significant. Are you going to loan him money to help pay his bills? No. Not at all? Pay his legal bills? I'm not, I'm not paying, paying his legal bills in any way, shape, or form. And he did not ask? I think you got him. Legal bills? I'm not, I'm not paying... I think you got him. I don't know. The weird, the weird repressing the smile there... That's sus. I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want to overread the body language, but uh, that's given me the. Uh, that's given me the sus. He's paying his legal bills in any way, shape, or form. And he did not ask you for money. And he did not ask me for money. Are you going to? So you're not going to endorse a candidate. I may, in the final stretch, endorse a candidate, uh, but I don't know yet. Uh, I, I want to make a considered decision uh, before the election, uh, and if I do decide to endorse a candidate, then I will explain exactly why. Are you leaning towards anyone? No. You're not leaning towards anyone. Because you've been- Let me say I'm leaning, leaning away from Biden. You're leaning away? <laughs> I've made no secret of that. Are you cons- Spineless. Spineless. Concerned about losing your security clearance, clearance if Biden is reelected, does that have anything to do with it? No. You are leaning away from Biden, but you're not going to endorse anyone. It seems like an endorsement of President Trump because there are only two people who are running now. Nikki Haley is out. I mean, a lot could happen between now and the election. So yeah. we'll see. 
who in the final analysis uh, are the choices for president. Um, and at that point, I may or may not endorse uh, one of the candidates. If I do, I will provide a very uh, detailed explanation of why I am endorsing one or the other. At that point, might you contribute or donate? I, I, I think it's unlikely. So you have been posting up a storm, as you always do in the past couple of weeks, about the redesign of the Tesla uh, Roadster coming at the end of this year. Thank you, Small. Are there any kind of updates that you can talk about that, uh, to expect from your flagship EV? I mean, Tesla stock is down the last six months. What's next for the company? You know, the, the stocks go up and down, but what really matters is are we making and delivering uh, and, uh, great products? Uh, the, the Tesla products are um, outstanding. Uh, last year, the model Tesla Model Y was the best-selling uh, car of any kind in the world. So it was about 1.2 million units. It was the best-selling car despite being, I think, around 50% more expensive than the next best-selling vehicle um, of any kind, not just electric. So um, I think this, that's a testament to the incredible work of the Tesla team. Yeah. Um, and uh, we launched the Cybertruck. Obviously, that's uh, being very well received. Um, I don't think that's true either. The number one test, the, the number one best selling car in 2023. The only place I see Tesla on the top of those lists is red is Reddit posts. Every news source does not say Tesla. I see the Ford F series was the best selling vehicle of 2023. I see Toyota was the best selling brand of 2023 overall. The Ford F-150 Top selling SUV. No, what's the top selling car? Ford F Series. Ford F Series. I don't see any citation that that's the case. I think he just straight up lied. I see predictions that it might have been, but I don't believe that it actually was. Let's see. Let's see. What does Wikipedia say? I want to see if there's a buy year. Do we have a buy year? Oh no, they don't on Wikipedia. By Ke by Kelly Blue Book, the best selling cars of 2023. Let's see. Kelly Blue Book says Ford F-150. F series told sold 750,000. The Tesla Model Y is top is on the, is number 5. Yeah, I don't know about that, bro. I don't know about that, man. We have uh I think over a million orders for the Cybertruck. Um so uh it's it's a really special product. That is, those. I think the Cybertruck is one of those product that products that come comes along really once in several years, maybe once a decade. A, a, a Cybertruck is a once a decade. <laughs> comes up, it's the best car ever, and the and the and the best car only ever comes around every couple of years. Dude, come on! The product it is so uh, special, and and I think it's our best product. Um, so. But everyone improves over time. I mean, Apple, I thought my phone was... Oh, yeah. So this one. Um, Lava Monster says, this source seems to back Musk up. And it's the Verge article. But that article was written in May of 2023. And it was only looking in quarter one. So that doesn't... The, that, that's specifically for quarter one. The Tesla Model Y is the first EV to become the world's best-selling car. 
the Tesla Model Y outsold the Toyota Corolla in quarter one, despite being almost double the price, which is almost word for word what he said. However, that was only for quarter one. This is not an article looking at the entire year. He said 2023. But obviously, like if you if you want to slice it however you want, like you could say what was the best selling car five minutes ago, and it could be anything. You know what I mean? Like if you say the best selling car of 2023, you got to look at the whole year. You can't just look at 20 at, at 2020. Uh, you can't just look at quarter one. Right. It could have been for a period of time, but who knows? Right. Like. Okay, so if a game launches in quarter one and it sells a ton at launch and it becomes the current best seller at that moment, like say, um, say you know that uh, in an imaginary world that in quarter one, we have a new Monster Hunter game, you know, Monster Hunter World 2. It does crazy good. But then in quarter two, you get the new Call of Duty game and it immediately outsells it. For quarter one, it might have been the best selling car and it might have been the best selling game in the world. Monster Hunter World 2 might have been the best seller, but it's not anymore for, for that year or for that quarter once it gets surpassed by whatever releases the next thing. So I, I don't know about that. Anyway, let's continue. But Apple, you know, the phone got better over time. That I'm sure the your your cars will get better over time. You have been tweeting about the the updates in, in the roasters. There's something that we yeah should yeah expect? sure. The, you did mention the roaster. So, um, look, I don't want to give away you know much more than what I've said uh, publicly, except that the roadster will be uh, a collaboration between SpaceX and Tesla. So, you know, you can expect some rockety stuff there. Um, a flying car. Maybe. <laughs> it's not out of the question. Go on. I'm cringing. I'm cringing. No, I, 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 like, I gotta, I gotta reserve the cool stuff for the, you know, when, when we actually unveil it. But it's, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna be really cool. It's gonna have, um, it's gonna have some rocket technology in it. Um, I think the. Well, the only way to do something that's cooler than the Cybertruck is, is to combine. Lava Monster says, yeah, it seems Musk is being very pedantic or using a language loophole. It was the best selling car in 2023, but not for all of 2023. Exactly. It's weaselly. That is some weaselly language. It's the weaselly language of a coper. You know what I mean? It would be one thing if it was like, you know, if it was like, second place depending on how you measured it and he decided to say yeah dude i got the number one selling car and some people were like well technically this or that and it was like something close but it's not it it became the best selling so far in the first quarter of the year and then it was surpassed by seemingly many other things kelly blue book is like one of the main like mainstream car statistic web pages that you can go to. It is like the one. And they're like, yeah, it's like fifth on the list. So it's not even fucking close. He's just, it, just, it screams of pathetic insecurity. The uh, SpaceX and, 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 and Tesla technology to create something that's not even really a car. Then what would it be? Something that's never existed before. I'm getting Jetsons vibes. Totally Jetsons vibes. It'll, it'll, uh, and and uh, the ones may not be aware, like some things that I have said publicly is that it'll do zero to 60 in under one second. So um, that's by far faster than any, uh, you know, sports car that, that exists. Um, that will not happen. There is, there is no, no chance. And, um, and that's not even the most exciting thing about it. Does it have wings? No, it does, it does not have big wings, because big wings would be unwieldy on the road. Does it have propellers? <laughs> it does not have propellers. Okay. It has wheels. It does have wheels. Okay. <laughs> does it have, roadster 20 questions. It has a, does it have a steering wheel? Not exactly. What is it? 
it w well, it'll have, it'll have a drive-by wire uh, yoke, essentially, like a kind of like the way aircraft or modern jets are controlled. And do you think it's a way of the future that everyone will follow your lead on this? I don't think anyone will ever make anything like the, uh, the, the roadster that, that we're going to make. Yeah. Let's talk now about um, SpaceX, Tesla. You've got a lot of lawsuits. You've got X.com. You've got a lot going on. How do you relax? Well, um, I, I relax. I spend time with my kids, my friends, and I, you know, make somewhat of a nerd technologist till I, I like playing video games. So uh, I'll play video games with, with, with friends online. Which one? And lately, I've been playing Diablo. Um, oh, and... oh, we know. Oh, one of the funniest things I've ever seen was people crunching the numbers on how much Diablo he has to play. Also, that's pathetic. Look, uh, I, I have some judgments for people who are, A, still playing Diablo 4, and also uh, there was a... So basically... When he did, he did a really shitty stream on, I believe it was onto Twitter. He streamed onto Twitter as a demonstration of the technology. It looked like shit, it sounded like shit. He was playing Diablo and he had an insanely high level character, um, which basically means that, uh, which at that point to be that level, you know, this, this guy was doing some serious basement dweller gameplay. I'm talking gameplay that like most of us can't even dream of. And we got a lot of gamers in this audience, okay? We got a lot of gamers here. It's it's bad. Yeah, but he's always working. Do you guys remember that? Do you does anybody here remember um back in the day? This was before this was this was a long time ago. This was back when he was first starting up uh SpaceX and he used to go around and do interviews where it'd be like, Elon Musk is always working. He literally never stops. He sleeps on a bed in his office because he's a grinding genius who needs to work to have his visions recognized. It's like now, of course, everybody's, you know, that's all been brushed under the rug and we know the truth, which is that he pays a ton of people to do shit for him. He randomly bungles shit up to the great ire of his employees and then he plays Diablo for an ungodly amount of time. Jesus fucking Christ. Oof. And, um, but I've played almost all the games over the years. Uh, a long time ago, I was like semi-pro good at Quake. This is really dating me uh, because we're talking about like one twenty-five years ago. <laughs> I don't know video games. I just know that my uh, my great nephew loves Fortnite and some other stuff. He's always yeah. with the headphones and and doing. I might page. So we'll that see. helps you relax, right? So if you yeah. This is, and, you, it's, and the nice thing is if you've, got if you've got friends in different cities and they're playing the same game, you can both go online at the same time and uh, play the game together, even though you're in different cities. Listen, I'm not asking you anything that anyone else hasn't asked you about um, your controversial stuff that you tweet. You post a lot of controversial stuff. Is that considered blowing off steam? Um, Well, I, I guess I do en enjoy using the platform. I mean, I do call um, the X platform the the PVP or player versus player uh, platform. Oh, that's um, good. Oh, that's so video good. Video games says uh, oh, player versus oh, like, that's environment um, where you're not playing against other people, um, and then there's PVP, which is like hardcore. You're actually playing against other people, and uh, so, but that's blowing off steam for you. Yeah. Yes. It, it, it is to some degree, not always. I mean, obviously I use it for, uh, to post jokes, to post, uh, you know. To post tweets in support of Adolf Hitler? Sometimes trivia, uh, sometimes things that are of great hey, importance. Hey, Wendell it's uh, great to see you. So you do a lot of it at night, like late at night. So when you're doing this, are you, are you sober when you do it? I almost always, Are you yes. under the influence of anything? Uh, no, I don't, I don't drink. I don't really... No, I... No. I don't drink. I don't really... Uh, nah. Dude, come the fuck on. First of all... Uh, first of all... Swagless. Being like, I'm a gamer and I, I'm, I'm a straight-edge gamer. 
I stay up all night playing Diablo 4. I focus entirely on the game. Uh, I only do PvP. Fucking swagless. Swagless! So you got no drink, no smoke, no nothing? I mean, you smoke pot with Rogan. I had one puff. Yeah. I think anyone who smokes pot can tell I don't know how to, how to smoke pot. But you've admitted that you've had, you have a ketamine prescription. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's that for? Oh. Well, I mean... Oh. Oh, oh, he doesn't do any drugs because, because his ketamine is prescription. <laughs> Guys, don't worry. I have a prescription for Adderall. So when I crack open eight of the Adderalls and snort them all at once, it, I'm not doing any drugs, guys, because I have a prescription. I have a prescription for Xanax. So when I take a whole bunch of them and I drop them into a purple slushy and then I go, oh, shit. I'm not doing any drugs. It's pretty private to ask somebody about a medical prescription, you know. Um, but uh, it's, I think it's, it's something I'd say like, uh, th there are times when I have um, sort of, uh, I don't know, like a, like a negative chemical state in my, in my brain. Uh, like depression, I guess, you know, is, or, or, or like depression that's not linked to any negative views. Um, and, and, and then uh, ketamine is helpful for uh, getting, getting one outside, out of a negative frame of mind. Well, listen, I, 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 in fact, I generally, you know, obviously I'm not a doctor, but I would say uh, if someone has depression issues, they should consider talking to their doctor about ketamine instead of SSRIs. Listen, I, I think that um, ketamine uh, and drug therapy is uh, increasingly becoming more in the mainstream. Yeah. Do you think you're doing it under a doctor's care, right? Yeah, yeah, literally a prescription from an actual, a real doctor, not like, you know. Yeah, but do you, um, do you feel like you ever abuse it? I don't think so. If you use too much ketamine, you can't really get work done. Yeah. So I have a lot of work. Dude, so. you just said that you play tons and tons of Diablo 4, dude. Okay, come on, man, come on. So I'm, I'm typically putting in like, you know, 16 hour days. That's normal for me. And So you do 16 hour days, you sleep for what one hour and then you do what let's see 16 hour days so that gives you eight hours to kick around you sleep for one hour you get seven hours of diablo in i don't know bro it's, it's, it's rare for me to even take off a weekend day so i don't really have like you know a situation where i can be not mentally acute for an extended period of time like i can't it's, i can't really get wasted with when because uh, i can't get my work done so how often do you take it um well, it's, it'd be like it's a small amount once every other week or something like that. But there's, I mean, there's not on the bottle where it says take this dose this many times a week or whatever. If it's yeah, not sure there's a dose. And I, I, it's, there, there are several weeks will go by where I don't use it. You don't use it. Yeah, I think it's just, like I said, I think the, the, the what I find kind of is if you if you have like literally like a chemical state in your brain that you can't you can't just think yourself out of, then. Uh, Ketamine can ha is helpful for getting you out of a depressive mind state. You suffer from depression or you have a depressive mind state? And I asked you as someone who has suffered from depression. I wouldn't say that I, I, I wouldn't say that I have like a, a case of like extended depression. Um, it's just once in a while, I get into a, ne a negative sort of chemical mind state once in a while. Do you remember in the last interview we watched where he said that his brain was like a dark storm that nobody can understand? That he's like a tortured genius? And now he's like, well, you know, sometimes I'm depressed. I don't, you want to know what the real, real answer is? He doesn't want to say that he's depressed because that will hurt his cred with the far right because they don't believe in depression. I'm serious, okay? Um, the, like, on the far right, the idea of being depressed means that you are a soy boy cuck who uh, will, like, who, who deserves to be, like, killed by Odin if they're that type or God, if, if, you know, Jesus is, you know, the, the mean God, you know, not, not Jesus. He's too nice. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. The far right ha does not, they, they don't, they don't, they don't deal well with mental health. They think that it's a conspiracy. I grew up around these people. It's, it's not, they're not like all, they're all not all like believers in modern medicine. They don't exactly take depression seriously. They think it makes you a weak cuck who, who they say that of course, and 90% of them actually are depressed and do take it, but they have to keep up the show, you know? And he knows that it'll hurt his cred. 
and also that it'll hurt his cred with his investors who are increasingly in the far right and they don't want some weak, depressed soy boy trying to reclaim Western civilization for them. It's not a, not a common thing. Um, but once in a while, it does happen. Where do you think that comes from? I think it's just genetic, basically. You think it's just genetic history? I think so. Um, yeah. I mean, some people are just wired, wired to be happy all the time. Uh, some are, unfortunately, wired to be sad a lot of the time. Um, and in my case, uh, I'm, you know, I'm generally pretty, pretty positive and optimistic. Uh, but once in a while, uh, I don't know what happens to some, uh, like I said, I think it's just a chemical tie to your brain once in a while. It's like a brain storm. Yeah. Oh, Do you ever back on the storm. worry that this may get in the way of your government contracts and clearances? And, and also, no. and, and Wall Street as well. Well, from a standpoint of Wall Street, uh, what matters is uh, execution. It's, I, I, feel, I feel a little validated by Don Lemon following up with that question which is exactly what I said, that he can't say that he has depression because that would hurt his cred with people who uh, need to perceive him a certain way. What a tortured existence. I say that, but again, he's also the richest guy in the world. Uh, but still, I guess it goes to show you money can't buy happiness, literally, which just makes it even more sick and disgusting because he could have, that money could be distributed to many other people who would actually benefit to a certain degree from having their basic needs met, but he's just sitting here on a mountain of goddamn money and as miserable as shit at the top of it. You know, uh, it can buy you a lot of ketamine. Well, the ketamine doesn't seem to be helping that much. He doesn't seem happy. He doesn't seem like he's functioning. Are you building value for investors? Um, Tesla is worth uh, about as much as the rest of the car industry combined from nothing. So, I, you know, that's pretty good. Um, as I mentioned, we, ha we had the best selling car true? on Earth last year. Um, so for, for an investor standpoint, if there is something I'm taking, I should keep taking it. Have you, you talk about your ketamine use and, and depression, have you, you also have said, and the, the reason I, sh I should say, like, the, like the reason I mentioned, uh, the, the academy prescription on the X platform was because I thought maybe this is something that could help other people. That's why I mentioned it. Yeah. Can we talk about the great replacement theory now? Um, some of the things that you post, the great replacement theory, you claim that Democrats, President Biden's immigration plan to open up the border. You said that they're the president. The market cap. Here's people talking about on the Tesla, the Tesla, um, a Tesla subreddit. Oh, people are not happy on this post. Totally not a bubble. I guess it is. I guess he is kind of right about that. It's the market cap is worth more than the next top five companies combined. But also, it's lost. And also, oh yeah, a lot of people in this thread are pointing out the full self-driving is what all of this investment money rests on. That's really fucked up. He's basing it off the stock price. Yeah, but, but still, I mean, that's probably the first truthful claim that he's made about Tesla in this entire interview. And it's notable the nature of that claim. People are excited about it, but if it doesn't deliver, then that is a bubble that will pop. Wow. Anyway, let's continue. That is getting, and Democrats are doing it to get more votes. Um, Sorry, what did I miss? President Biden. Um, so I think that's why I mentioned it. Yeah. Can we talk about the great replacement theory now? Woo! Um, some of the things that you post, the great replacement theory, you claim that Democrats... President Biden's immigration plan to open up the border. You said that they're, the president is getting, and Democrats are doing it, to get more votes. Um, but undocumented immigrants cannot vote in federal elections, so how is that possible? 
Right. Um, well, you're conflating two things. One is great replacement theory. Uh, the other is, which I, I don't subscribe to that. I'm simply saying that there is an incentive here. Uh, if uh, legal immigrants, which I think have a, a very strong bias to, at least everything I've read, it's a very strong bias to vote Democrat. Um, Bro, the, the more more that come into the country, the more they're likely to vote uh, in that direction. But it, it is, in my view, uh, an, the, a simple incentive to increase uh, voters to Democrat voters. Um, I, and yeah, so the so question is like how? So there's there's a few there's a, a few ways that this works. One is that uh, when the census is done, uh, the census is based on all all people in an area, whether they are citizens citizens or not. So uh, if there are a concentration of uh, people who came here illegally in, in, a, in a particular state or uh, in any particular state, that state will actually then get uh, an increased number of house seats. So the, the house seat apportionment is proportionate to the number of people, not the number of citizens. So the... the, the Holy shit. That is... That is... So he, so he's now, now he's what, this is what we call free balling. Okay. <laughs> in the business, you know, just a little business insider term. This is the, this is what we call free balling. Okay. Uh, this is, this is, uh, this is flying by the seat of your pants, my man. So now he's trying to say that the Democrats are trying to increase, increase immigration to such a degree that it requires, uh, the census to reapportion the amount of house seat that is that is that is the most harebrained scheme I've ever heard of and also that would be the most visible scheme ever imaginable because you would have to have an enormous amount of people going to very specific areas and you know I'm just I'm just going to say you know I don't think that they're sending like Oh, you know, the Democrats are secretly sending a whole bunch of illegal immigrants into the middle of Wyoming to, 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 in a drastic attempt to increase the Democratic seats that Wyoming will be apportioned in the next census re slash reapportionment. This is, that is some goof shit. Free balling. The illegals uh, overwhelmingly go to places like California, New York, um, and the why would they do that? Why would they go to a place like California and New York, which is already a blue state? Why wouldn't they send all of the illegals to fucking Wyoming and immediately force it to, to suddenly have a bunch of new representatives, all of whom are Democrats and illegals? It makes no fucking sense. This is harebrained. This is, this is some wild stuff. You just look at the, look the math. If, if, if you look at the apportionment <laughs> with and without illegals, I believe California would lose, I believe, I believe the blue state, there would be a net loss of blue states of approximately 20 seats in the House. And? Uh, this also applies to the, the Electoral College. So you say, like, well, this also applies to, to electing the president because the, the, the same, the electoral votes are also done by, by <laughs> apportionment the same way that House seats are done. But the reason you the electoral... <laughs> Oh, this is incredible. This is amazing. The college is in place is to, to balance that is so that that doesn't happen. So what you're saying about it is the exact opposite of the reason yeah. why the, the electoral college is there. The electoral college at this point, it, at this point in, in our history, gives people who are in smaller states and red states much more of an influence over our elections than people who are in blue states and the majority of the people in this country. That's what the Electoral College does. It actually does the exact opposite of what you're saying. Yeah, it, it benefits land because the Electoral College was designed to benefit landholders. That's the, the design of the Electoral College was to benefit those who are landed elites. It was a covert way of maintaining the power of pseudo nobles. It protects people who are in smaller states and protects people who are in red states. Well, um, the red I, states I, because I, they tend I, to I, be I smaller think, and, and think, less populous. I think that that's, that's, that statement is, is uh, what, what you said is, is true, but what I said is also true. No, uh, dude, they were that, contradictory. Oh, my God. Uh, if, uh, if, as is the case, a disproportionate number of legal immigrants go to uh, blue states, they amplify the effect of a, of a blue state vote. And 
the math, as I understand it, you can research this, obviously. No, right? that would further deflate it. Oh, my Easily, God. Easily, I mean, it's, it's like, it's, it's pretty straightforward to, to research this. But my understanding is that there would be, uh, that, that the, the Democrats would lose approximately 20 seats in the House uh, if illegals were not counted in the census. And that's also 20 less electoral votes for president. So the illegals absolutely do affect the, the, uh, who controls uh, the, House of Co the House and who controls uh, the presidency. It does not affect uh, the Senate. Yeah. In blue states, you're talking about. I yes. don't believe that your information on, on uh, that is right. Um, so listen, the, let's talk more about the Great Replacement because the first time that you did, you posted on X about uh, this Jewish conspiracy, you ended up apologizing. I didn't call it a, a conspiracy. I, I just said that there's a simple matter of incentives. You don't need a conspiracy when you have basic incentives. In yeah. my view, there's a basic incentive that's fundamental uh, that uh, for, for the Democrat, Democrat Party to foster and, and usher in a large number of illegals. Yeah. And, they, and, and, and you don't need a conspiracy in that case because you have a very basic incentive. You could Dude, oh my god, this is so funny. Oh, this is the biggest this is the biggest self report ever. The fact that he thinks the fact that he's trying to sit here and say that he thinks there's a basic incentive for replacing white people with illegals is it, it just shows how deeply the far right anti Semitic brainworms have actually dug into his brain. It they've gotten deep. Holy shit. Say I'm wrong about that incentive, but that's my view. I, I'm not buying into, I don't even, uh, buying some great replacement theory. I'm simply saying there appears to be a very clear incentive for uh, uh, Democrats to have, to maximize the number of illegals um, because it helps them win elections. I'm talking about the great replacement theory is also part of a Jewish conspiracy theory. And when you did the tweet or you responded to the tweet about that you ended up apologizing and which i think is this is him you have said the actual truth okay oh, let me move this here is the the tweet okay this is the quote the one that he's saying okay jewish communities have been pushing the exact type of dialectical hatred against whites that they claim to want people to stop using against them I'm deeply disinterested in giving the tiniest shit now about Western Jewish populations coming to the disturbing, and it continues. And he says, you have said the actual truth. This is Elon Musk endorsing specifically the great replacement theory as an anti-Semitic race theory, as an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory about replacing white people with people with non-white skin. You know, it's good that you ended up apologizing. You went to Auschwitz with Ben Shapiro. Yeah. Right? So you said you learned your lesson. What did you learn? I said I learned my lesson. You said you learned your lesson when, it, when you apologized. And you said you went to Auschwitz. You saw what... what... No, I was already, already aware of, 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 of these things. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And the nature of my comment that, that really inflamed people... Um, what I, was, what I was trying to say, and I did very quickly clarify, this is what I'm saying, is that uh, um, a number of uh, prominent uh, Jewish philanthropists fund uh, groups that they should really take a closer look at funding because some of the, some of the group... I am Adolf Hitler! ...they fund, um, I think, are anti-Semitic. Yeah. Do you understand the connection between the two? There one, there's a connection between you said Democrats, a great replacement theory, but when it comes to the actual great replacement theory, originally it was started about Jewish people, as you said, flooding in the country, and then now people are using it for Democrats, saying the same thing about Democrats. Flooding, in my view, it's a simple matter of incentive. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm, I don't, I actually don't see an incentive for uh, Jewish people to want to have, to get legal immigration. I don't, I don't think there is such an incentive. Yeah. The great replacement theory is a, a neo-Nazi trope it's in the neo-Nazi manifesto. It's in the Turner Diaries. It's referenced by the Buffalo mass shooter uh, in his manifesto where 10 people, um, black people were murdered in Buffalo. His actual title is the Christchurch Shooters Manifesto. 51 people in the Muslim mosque were murdered. 23 people uh, murdered in El Paso by a shooter who used the same language that you use in that manifesto when you say Hispanic invasion. Is that not? I didn't say an Hispanic invasion. And you tweeted, you quoted a tweet that said, that called it a Hispanic invasion. 
If I quote something, it doesn't mean I agree with anything at every end. It's just something that I want, I think this is something worth people should uh, consider. Why would you quote something that you didn't believe? Because anything I quote is going to have a whole range of statements. It doesn't mean I agree with everything in it. Do you think if there, if, if you... Bro. Moderated yourself That's pathetic. more... That's fucking pathetic. Weak. Again, this guy is just pathetic. That's not even, he didn't even bother weaseling out of that one. He just kind of let it wash over him. Or if there was better content moderation on the platform that you wouldn't have to answer these questions from reporters about the great, great replacement theory as it relates I to I don't Democrats. have to answer these questions. The great replacement theory as it relates to- Dude, you do, you, you, you do. I mean, technically he doesn't have to. He could just retreat and become like, you know, just play Diablo 4 all the time and pay someone to do all his work for him. I mean, like he already does, but he could just do, he could just stay inside and not go on these interviews. But people are asking it constantly. Like anybody with even a slightly functioning brain who has spent any time on twitter.com knows how it's changed. They can see the blue checks. You made it so that, Elon Musk made it so that the blue checks all show constantly uh, at the top of every thread and you can see what they're saying. It is not hard to see the trends on Twitter and what people are talking about on Twitter these days. Like obviously people are gonna ask when, when you see like viral tweets you know, going popular in the past, it'd be like, I don't know, a video of a dog. And now it'll be a video of a dog. And it'll be like 20 comments of people just being like, yeah, this reminds me why the Democrats are trying to replace white people with black people. You know? And you're just like, dude, whoa. Jewish people, do you think that? I don't have to answer questions from the reporters. Don, the only reason I'm doing this interview is because you're on the X platform and you asked for it. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, I would not do an interview with this interview. So you don't think, you, do you think that you wouldn't get in trouble or you wouldn't be criticized for these things? I'm or criticized that possibly. I could care less. It, you, don't, you don't care? No, I don't Why care. not? I don't think people should care what the media thinks about them. Oh, yeah. They're terrible. The guy, who, Elon Musk, the guy who definitely doesn't care at all about what people have said about him. The guy who didn't just hit his last major media appearance have a huge meltdown about how Disney was going to kill his company by criticizing him. By not advert, not even by criticizing him, by not advertising with him. Yeah, dude. Judge of the character. Even someone who has one of the biggest social media and biggest information platforms in the world, you don't think, you don't care, you don't think that there's, you have any x.com or you have any responsibility to the truth or moderating the platform oh uh, you're conflating the truth with the with the media and i think the media is uh not truthful well not with just the the media i mean just the truth in general I, I, I care about the truth very much that's why we have for example community community notes on the, the x system um where uh in order for community note to surface and uh, provide corrective information about what somebody posts. And, and my posts are equally subject to this. My I've been Phoenix community noted many times. Um, the, in order for, for a community note to surface, uh, people who have historically disagreed must agree in order for a community note to surface. And all of the code for community notes is open source. All of the data is open source, so you can completely recreate it from scratch. The way to build trust is transparency. I have noticed community notes. I think that you are right about that, and I do think community notes are helpful. I think any yeah. type of content moderation, I do think that's helpful. You recently called content moderation, though, a digital chastity belt. Do you think that, you, you believe that X and you have some responsibility to moderate hate speech on the platform? I think we have a responsibility to adhere to the law, and we have a responsibility to be transparent uh, about when things are shown, why they're shown, uh, so we, that's why we, we uh, open source our algorithm. Um, the, I think once you start getting going beyond the law, now you're putting your thumb on the scale. And we don't want to put our thumb on the scale. It doesn't concern you that hate speech has gone. Research shows that it's gone up on the platform since you took over. That's not concerning to you? I believe that is false. In fact, the research that I've seen says it, go, it went down. The, the study from the Institute of Strategic Dialogue found that anti-Semitic tweets doubled from June 22 to February 2023. One study reported that as many as 86% of the posts reported for hateful content remained up after being reported. Hate speech on the platform is up. Uh, so what, what they will typically do is they will count the number of posts, but not count the number of views. 
So what matters is, was that uh, post given high visibility? Huh? D what? <laughs> or what did, did like one What? Post How does that, that is the worst. Th oh my God. The obvious, listen, look, look, the obvious liar answer here would have been to deny, to say, oh, those, oh, I know what studies you're talking about. Those ones were bad. They didn't use the right information. Instead, he just goes, oh, well, you know, um, oh, actually, yeah, those, those were right. Oh, you're right. Actually, uh, I just said that hate speech went down, but actually hate speech did go up. But you didn't consider this other thing. You didn't consider that maybe it didn't get viewed as much. But are you going to give some information about how much views they got before? So see it. Uh, and if you look at the number of views of how, 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 many, how many times was his content viewed on our platform, it is down substantially. Dude, yeah. I don't believe that he has these numbers. I don't believe that he has them. I don't believe it. Well, that's not what the study shows. And you said you like transparency. I'm going to show you this. And, and Don, you can, you can get a study that will tell you whatever you want. But this, this, this is, these are just a handful of extremely, you look at those anti-Semitic and racist tropes and tweets. And as of this morning, they're still on X. And from oh, your own- Oh, oh shit. That is a get. That is a dirty tactic. Oh, I mean, I, I'm here for it. I feel like holding, like, Elon should be able to have an easy answer for this, but that is rough to be like, our team grabbed these tweets from blue checks that are paying for it, obviously hate content, still up on the website. That is a, that is a, that's a doozy. Content policy, these posts should have been deleted. So why haven't they been deleted? Why are they still there? Did you, uh, we delete things if they are illegal. But these have been up there for a while. Are they illegal? Uh, no, they're not illegal, but they're hateful and they can, they can lead to violence. As I just read to you, the shooters, you know, in all of these mass shootings, attributed social media to radicalizing. So, so Don, you love censorship is what you're saying? No, I don't love censorship. Then why are why you- Oh, bro, bro this, is, this is like, He's not even, he didn't even denounce them. Step one would have been, oh, those are terrible. Those are absolutely terrible. He just immediately went to, oh, you hate free speech then. Bro, this man's done for. This is it. His path, we've seen, we've seen Elon Musk decline. We've seen his, we've seen his decline, but we, I can now see he's beginning his Glinner era. I believe in moderation, but I, I don't believe in censorship is a, it's a, Moderation is a propaganda word for censorship. But don't you think free speech is one thing, right? Or not, you know, Look, if something's not illegal, we're going to take it down. If it's not illegal, then we're putting our thumb on the scale and we're being... Wait, wait, hold on a second. Remember when, remember when Elon Musk took down that, that one account that used uh, publicly available data to say where his jet was? That's not illegal. They didn't do anything illegal. He didn't sue them. And yet he took it down. Why is that? Interesting, right? Almost like this guy is full of shit and he decides what is actually worth bending the rules for. And in his mind, it's worth, uh, it's worth not, you know, not banning anything disgustingly, obviously, viscerally, hatefully racist, and instead maintaining, uh, uh, maintaining that and, and getting rid of things that personally inconvenience him. Westside Tyler, thank you so very much for the raid. Come in and get comfortable, everybody. We are enjoying an incredible, incredible interview with the one and only Don Lemon, uh, interviewing some, uh, ketamine out Diablo 4 player. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! He also banned the uh, the stone toss leaks. None of that was illegal. None of what was done in the stone toss leaks was illegal. And he, and he banned them. In fact, he banned it so hard that you couldn't even mention the topic. Wild. This guy is full of shit. Answers. You're putting your thumb on the scale for moderating hate speech. I mean, you don't 
put out child pornography, that's not it's illegal. That some people would say that's considered censorship. I'm just saying you. No, I literally, Don, you know, I, I literally said if, if something is legal, okay, we will obviously remove it. Okay. Damn. So uh, by that rule, then he should allow that. By that rule, then he should allow uh, posting bestiality to his website as long as you're posting it from the number of su of the number of U.S. states where it is currently legal to uh, possess beast videos of bestiality. Damn, damn, gotcha, Elon, gotcha, bro. It's time, you're fucking, you're, you're silencing the people, you bitch. Obviously joking. Uh, we can obviously tell what position I'm in here, which is uh, websites need to have moderation rules and it's illegal is a cop out. I don't think it's legal anymore. Florida was the last state. I don't know about that. Uh, I know it was a I know it was a controversial issue in the United States for a long time. Kind of weird. Kind of weird. Kind of funny. Also, kind of funny that there are carve outs, uh, or at least there were. I don't know what the current state is because I don't exactly keep up to date on this. But uh, it's kind of funny that there were en there were enough states that were like, yeah, yeah, totally. You totally, you you need to have that video. They fought about it. Somebody fought about it. Imagine being the lawyer who gets who gets uh, hired by the guy who makes videos of sheep fucking, and sells them on the internet. Imagine being the lawyer and going, "Oh shit, this is gonna fucking suck." <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> Elon Musk here. Uh, Elon Musk coming out as a proud sheep fucker. But if it is not legal, the, 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 the laws in this country are, are, are put forward by the citizens. We're a democracy. Uh, if those laws are put in place uh, by, the, by the people, we adhere to those laws. Okay, and I agree. We agree. To the laws of, of, okay. of others. If you go beyond the law, you're actually going beyond the will of the people. Okay. Like you did, like you did when you uh, when you got rid of that jet guy's account. Like you did when you got rid of that uh, the the stone toss leaks. Agreed uh, with the law. But if you are doing something that promotes hate and violence and ultimately leads to killing, you don't feel there's you have any responsibility not to do that? Uh, when 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 the people who I are mean, doing I, it I admittedly are saying those articles all the time that lead to to violence and killing. Um, don't, don't they? Shouldn't they? It's like you're applying a differential standard to. But uh, that would never that would never be in mainstream media. These types of images, that type of language, those things would never be. We'd never, in main, when I was in mainstream media, we'd never promote things that um, would would be anti-Semitic. We would never we promote things that would. Anti-Semitic either. Did you, did you, did you not see those? You said promote. You said if content is on the platform, that doesn't mean we're blue check, bro. You literally promote blue check tweets by default. It's in the code. You can't argue that one. It explicitly gives preference. It explicitly promotes them. You promote it. But that wouldn't be on a, on a platform for mainstream media at all. No, but you can think of that. That's because the mainstream media is has like whatever. I think that I think that Don has kind of messed up this segment by not pointing out the fact that the blue check system is promotion and also by not having on hand examples of when he broke that rule when it was convenient to him. Bringing up the jet situation here would have been perfect. Bringing up the countless times that Elon Musk has gone out of his way to ban people who did not break the law, but inconvenienced him or his political agenda, that would have been really strong. As a result, this just kind of sounds, um, it, this kind of comes off as a little bit like, um, the framing is is better for Elon in, on one hand here. Like obviously Elon's position is bad, but but you know Don Lemon didn't hit him with any of the stuff we just hit him with. But that's why you watch me, right? By the way, if you're watching, please make sure that you press like. Make sure that you press like. If you came in with the West Side Tyler raid, welcome and thank you for being here. Thank you to West Side Tyler. But also. Uh, uh, if you want to uh, uh, subscribe, make sure you subscribe to the show. Perfect opportunity. Anyway, let's consider. Let's continue. 20 articles a day. 
Uh, we have 500 million posts today. Okay, understood. 500 million. Does it bother you? How do you feel about that when you see it? I obviously disagree with that. I think it's not, it's not good at all. It's terrible. But you don't want to get rid of it on the platform, or at least moderate it. The rules, the, you're, you're, what, what you're suggesting is censorship that goes beyond well, the law. It's, and what I'm saying is uh, I, that we, I guess, have a disagreement because I do not believe in censorship that goes beyond the law, and you do. We have a difference of opinion in that regard. I understand that. But these are your own rules on your own platform. This, these go against the, the rules on your platform. That's why I'm asking you. If you, had, if you said, listen, we allow everything, but that's not what your content rules say. And that's why I'm asking you why no. are they still there. The, your own content policy. That's why I'm asking you that, not because... Which part of our content policy says that we, have, we, we, we should delete these, these, these things? Your content policy talks about hate speech. Yes, we don't promote hate speech. Hate speech. And so you don't consider that hate speech? I guess you're not understanding what I'm saying. There's, 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 if, if, if there's, you, you can find, like, at, at, you can sign up right now and, and, and do a, a hundred things that are hateful. Um, but if nobody reads it, it doesn't matter. So the, you, can, you can think of X as being, it's much like the internet. It's not some, t it's some tiny publication with like 20 articles a day. It's 500 million. Uh, but everyone has the opportunity to read it, Elon. So and they, they, they don't the opportunity to read the internet. Are you said suggesting we should shut down the internet? No, but, but you don't own the internet. I'm asking you about you and your responsibility and your platform. And I, I, so I see how you feel now. You don't agree. Whew, we don't boy. agree on this. I yeah. can absolutely understand at this point, this section and the last section, I can completely understand why Elon Musk did not want this interview to go public. Uh, I can understand why he felt bad about this and had a, and would have and had a hissy fit about it. I can compl like this is terrible for him, and I, and that was with me even criticizing Don Lemon. Like I do think that Don Lemon missed a couple of uh, of opportunities, but he still fumbled it. He comes off looking like a weird psycho who supports racism. That's what this reads like. If somebody who is unconvinced on this issue watched this v interview, it would come. It would seem like he doesn't give a shit about racism and that he's full of shit. So you want censorship and I don't. No, I don't want censorship. At yes, all. you do. No, I want responsibility. I think there's. I think there. You desperately want censorship. No, if I want a censorship. You want censorship so bad you can taste it. No, that's not true. It's not true. I think that there's right and wrong. And, and I think that, you want and I and I think that when you have a platform that's as big as yours and as powerful as yours and as influential as yours, and you are a person who, of consequence to the world with what you do, that there is a certain responsibility that goes along with what you have on your platform and what you put out to the world, and I, I think that's important. You don't see that responsibility. Um, I think the we, we have a responsibility to uh, adhere to the law, um, and if people want the law Cop changed. Out. They should out, bro. Talk, to the elector, talk to their elected representative and get the law changed. So, so now the follow-up question is, do you support hate speech being banned? And then we will adhere to the law. Okay. But if you want us to go beyond the law, that is, that is uh, us deciding to be censors. So, and I'm against censorship. I'm, I'm in favor of freedom of speech. Yeah. And freedom of speech only is relevant when people... So wait, so it's not censorship. If the, if the government passed a law that banned Trump supporters from being able to talk about Trump in public. Apparently, according to Elon Musk in this interview, that would not be censorship. That, because the law did it. This is so brain dead. It's pathetic. It's, it's so pathetic. It, it, his argument sucks. It, it's terrible. It's, he's not even trying. You don't like, say things you don't like. Otherwise, it has no meaning. But I, I do think that there are, there should be guardrails. And I believe in free speech as much as you. I would no, fight, I don't, I, I don't disagree, I don't. Hey, Gay Fesh, good to see you. Is it just me or am I lost? Uh, I don't think, there's nothing really lost to be saying. He's, he's just not making any sense. He's, he's desperately trying to move on because he realizes he looks like a weird guy who defends racism here. I agree with. Um, a lot of what you put out on social media, but I will fight for your right to be able to say it. Right. Yeah. Okay, so listen, let's talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion, all right? That's been a target of yours lately on X. You, uh, on, there was a repost of Ben Shapiro that you claim that DEI is killing people. Specifically, you point to medicine. You claim that DEI programs are putting people at risk. 
Do you really believe this to be true? And what evidence do you have to support it? Um, what I was referring to there was that if, uh, if we lower the standards for doctors, uh, so, so that they, you know, get, if, if the test for a doctor is lowered, uh, that, then the probability of them making a mistake and killing someone is obviously going to be higher. Wait, say that again. I'm not sure I understand what you said. I want to make sure I understand what you're saying. I yes. Say. If, if, the, if the standards for passing medical exams and becoming a doctor or, or especially something like a surgeon, if the standards are lowered, uh, uh, then the probably that the... This is the worst response he could have had here outside of literally just like saying the N-word. So the question, remember, the question was about DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And he immediately says, I don't think we should lower tests to let people in. Just the direct implication of what he's saying there is that he thinks that anybody who's diverse can't actually pass a medical exam. Actually wild. Those who will make mistake is higher. They're making mistakes in their exam. They, they may make mistakes with people and that may result in people dying. What evidence do you have though that they're lowering the standards? There is no evidence of that. Well, I believe your... there is. There's no Where? evidence of that, Elon. What, what is the evidence? I, I believe they have literally lowered the status at, at Duke University, and that is what the article was referring to. There's no you evidence. You they have that. not lowered there's, the status? There's no evidence about uh, lowering standards, and I think that there is. Um, I believe that is a false statement you're making. Okay, well, well, we'll figure it out. Yeah. I, I think I mean, the interesting thing is, when this is posted on the X platform, there will be a whole bunch of things that rebut what you said and what, what I said, right. and so people can then make their own decision based on the replies and the rebuttals and the community notes. I think that's fair, but I do think that w on this particular topic, I do think that you and Ben Shapiro are, are reaching in uh, about this because there was a, what, it, what Ben posted said that people were, he gave instances of people who were deliberately uh, harming people. Um, nowhere in the thread does Ben suggest at all, I should say, that anyone is being killed as a, a result of DEI? Um, that's purely speculative. There's research on DEI and medicine, and there's no evidence that standards are being lowered, okay. that DEI is affecting medicine. Actually, like okay, well, only 5% of doctors yeah. are black, and a small percent. Yeah, my, well, I think you'll find that when this is posted to the X platform, that uh, people will reply to it with evidence. Okay. And maybe I'm wrong. Let's see. Okay. Oh, man, what a cop out. Oh, uh, yeah, ch literally. Gayfesh, Gayfesh says, check the comments. They'll vindicate me. Literally, he just said, yeah, uh, well, you know, I said that, but I bet there's evidence in the comments or something. What is, like, if this doesn't, th this right here should tell you the supreme bullshit of the richest man in the world is running a social media site that he claims is the center for all news and his standards for making a statement like DEI is going to kill people is well somebody probably posted um posted evidence in the comments of what I said when he's asked, do you have evidence for that? The answer is no, but somebody will come up with some. It's literally like the most post hoc bullshit. And this is like the richest guy in the world commanding a, a massive platform that by his own admission, now I don't believe his, his claims. I don't think it's even close to the number one source of news, but it is a source of news. It just goes to show you that the highest reaches of our society, the most powerful people in our society are fucking full of it. They are full of it. They're bullshitters. So, but that's my whole thing about moderation. Maybe you're wrong, but you'll put it out there. You don't know if it's right. Do you think that your responsibility to make sure something is right before you, the person who owns it, Elon Musk, yeah. is a huge figure in the world, that you should know that it's true, that some of, there are people at X who can get research for you before you put something 
out there like that. That's not necessarily true, even in other examples. Um, if I say something that uh, is inaccurate, I'm immediately corrected on the platform. That's the advantage of a real-time uh, system like X. So there will be immediately in the replies cor people correcting me. There will be community note that will correct me, um, which is attached to the actual post itself. Do you think as many um, people read the? Yes. You think as many people read that as it reads your tweet? Yes. In fact, and if, if there's a community note that happens uh, later that or somebody didn't see, but they replied to that uh, or interacted with that post, we will notify them that there is now a community note correcting that post. Mm -hmm. Just so you Whereas if you consider the conventional media, that doesn't happen. Conventional media makes false statements all the time with no, and nobody ever hears the correction. When I was in conventional media, I can only speak for myself. If I got something wrong, if someone got something wrong on the platform that, that I was on, it was corrected. And we made sure that it was corrected. Now, I can't speak for right. well, anyone else. That's, I, think, I don't think that's a universal situation. Okay. So I just want, just the research, so when you talk, do you believe that people are dying because medical standards, DEI is causing medical standards to be lowered. Do you actually believe people are dying because of that? I, I believe that it, uh, if, if, we, if we lower the standards for what it takes to become a doctor. But you're saying if we lower the standards, yes. but do you believe people are dying because the standards are being lowered? I, I don't or have think that lowered. is yes an issue, but it could become an issue. Okay. But Dude, the... so many people would die if the air turned into mayonnaise. I, I can't. We fucking the air mayonnaise would kill so many fucking people, dude. Actual evidence in history shows the exact opposite. If you look at how minorities are treated by the medical system, oh, most doctors okay. most doctors now are white, and there are lots of mistakes in medicine. So you're saying that my doctors are have bad medical care. I'm trying to understand your logic here when it comes to DEI because there's no actual evidence of work. <laughs> that's, that's so good. That is just, oh, I can't wait. Let's hear you know what I'm saying. That's no, so I, good. I said, so if the standards, like, if, like let's say, uh, I think that particular thing was re referring to surgeons. Let's say a surgeon is, uh, is asked to, uh, a, <clears throat> a surgeon in training is asked to do a, a series of operations out of the supervision Making up a surgeon to get mad at. Making making up a surgeon to to imagine dying to. Of a senior surgeon. And they get a bunch of those operations wrong. If 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 that happens and yet they are still approved to be a surgeon, the probability that someone will die, I think, at some point is high. Okay. I understand that. But that's a hypothetical. That doesn't mean it's happening. I didn't say it was, I, it's, it's 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 and also he's talking about he's talking about He's talking about one medical school in the country supposedly changing something about its testing process. You know that not, that like the vast majority of doctors in the country do not go to Duke, right? That there are a lot of schools with a lot of different rules for medical schools all over the country. The vast Vast majority of doctors do not have anything to do with Duke University. This is such a child-brained and pathetic position. And I, I guess, again, it just speaks to the state of affairs. The state of, of, of political affairs in the United States is one of supreme madness. We are truly living in like a Bloodborne-esque timeline. Uh, people are deranging themselves on the internet and... And the most powerful people, the people who wield the most money and the most institutional power in the world are completely insane. They live in fantasy worlds that are totally made up and the rest of us have to deal with it. The rest of us have to, have to deal with whatever deranged reality they write for themselves. It's crazy. The good news is, of course, that uh, at the end of the day, there are other ways of having power in the world, that there are other ways of existing, that uh, these uh, enormous, miserable, idiotic, and deranged titans uh, uh, can only do so much. 
and they are perpetually aware, as is especially true in the case of Elon Musk, they are perpetually aware that even with all of the power that they amass, they still control nothing. It's happening. You, said, you didn't say it was happening. I said, I said it will. You, but I said, if, 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 if we lower status, people, people will die. <laughs> but why respond to something or put something out there that has not happened? Because I could say, you know, I don't want it to happen. I think we don't want to lower the lowest standards. OK, if you look at the history of the medical industry, um, especially when it comes to black Americans, it shows the exact opposite. If you look at the T Tuskegee experiment and on and on, only 5% of doctors are in America are black. All of them are white. So are you saying that if the majority of doctors are white, are you saying that, D and there are still these inequities, right? And there's, and people still, there are still mistakes. Are you blaming DEI for that? No, I'm, I, I'm very, very basically saying. That was a really good way to, that was a really good follow-up question from Don Lemon. Cause, um, what what Elon was trying to do there was kind of make it about well I was just I was just saying what if bro, and like I said my response to that is always just the like well what if the air was mayonnaise then if you're gonna use your platform as the guy the owner of Twitter with the single most visible account on all of Twitter if you're going to use it to ring an alarm bell to cause fear and concern you need to have a good reason for that. If tomorrow Joe Biden started talking about the air becoming mayonnaise and everybody having mayonnaise in their lungs, uh, people might freak out a little bit. And it would be an irresponsible use of your platform as the president of the United States. So too is this. Uh, so he was trying to weasel out of it by just saying, I was just saying, if bro. And then Don Lemon follows up by saying, okay, so hold on a second. DEI hasn't existed white doctors have been the majority of doctors, people still die all the time. And in fact, things like the Tuskegee experiments happened where uh, black people were tortured and experimented on by white doctors. That if we lower standards uh, for what it takes to become uh, a board certified surgeon uh, or, you know, an oncologist or something where that it were the the kind of disease we're talking about, if you make a mistake, causes someone to die, then the, the more people will die than if we don't lower the standards. Noel Holiday with the tier one sub, thank you so much for supporting this viewer supported show. Thank you so very much. How is Elon so pathetic? Because the truth is uh, that no one deserves this much power. Humans are fucking pathetic and they become more pathetic the more power that is infused into them, the more their weaknesses become apparent. And he was already a, 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 a pathetic person to begin with, and once infused with some, like the highest level of monetary power in the world, it magnified all of his weaknesses. Therefore, we should not lower the standards. But why do you think they're lowering the standards for minority doctors or women doctors or? That's what the, the, the audit, that's what that article said, that suggested, yes. At, the, at Duke University. Okay. The evidence that I have shows that that's not true. Okay. So listen, after the door blew off this um, mid-flight, this Alaskan Airlines flight, do you remember that? Um, you responded in a post claiming that the average HB, HBCU grad was less intelligent than the average airline pilot. Uh, and stated that it will take an airline crashing, an airplane crashing and killing oh, hundreds boy. of people for them to change this crazy policy of DIE. I don't know if you, did you misspell it on purpose, which meant it should be DEI. Do you believe that women and minority pilots are inherently less intelligent and less skilled than white male pilots? No, I'm just saying that we should not lower the standards for them. Okay. okay, but there's no evidence that standards are being lowered when it comes to the okay. airline industry. You've, re you've repeatedly said that there's no evidence that standards are being lowered, and watch the replies showing all the evidence that it is. Replies? Dude, come on! 
Dude, come the fuck on. That is pathetic, dude. You, he, in this, he can't even defer in this case to an article that he read. In the case of the Duke thing, at least he can say Duke. Now, to me, I feel like Don Lemon should have pointed out that Duke University is only one uh, interview and that he wasn't, that he doesn't agree with the analysis. But regardless, in this case, this was just Elon Musk taking a video of a Boeing uh, of a Boeing flight having a mechanical failure and blaming it on women and black people. That's insane. And and his response is, check the comments, bro. Check the comments, bro. So on social media or on Twitter are not necessarily fact and evidence. No, they will just, that's people's they will, they will opinion. Cite all okay. The, all the, all the we'll reply, in the replies to this, you will see how often the, this, the, the information is cited showing that indeed there are significant... Uh, cases where uh, standards are lowered. And I do hope- So his claim in this interview is that he believes that there are, there is significant evidence. This is what Elon Musk just claimed. He believes there is significant evidence that pilot standards are being specifically lowered for black people. And that is what results in a mechanical failure on Boeing jets. insane insane an insane person these are insane people this is a deranged irrational hateful stupid damaging worldview and this is the richest guy in the world saying this from the loudest platform you can imagine what i'm trying to get at to my audience is that you should take these types of things for the, the absolute reason to completely distrust these fucking self-styled authorities. You should distrust these goddamn rich people, these CEOs, these, these fake tech wizards. You should have the deepest distrust for these people. Heinous, it's heinous. That happens. I do yes. hope that happens. And think about this. The only check that we can see right here is a bunch of streamers. And yes, Don Lemon is a streamer. He is an independent YouTube video guy. Okay? A very successful one who used to have a very big platform. But this is the only real check that exists to these guys' power uh, uh, on an institutional level. There is no institutional check on Elon Musk's power. Our country has been abandoned to the hands of, of deranged nobles of the neo-feudalist future. A bunch of, of, of syphilitic, brain-wormed freaks with more money and land and possessions than you could possibly imagine. And there's no power structures that there's no institutional power structures that can check them. Instead, it's fallen into the hands of streamers to, to be like, wow, hey guys, um, maybe we should really, really, really not hitch, uh, hitch ourselves to this guy's schemes. Maybe we should really watch out and stay away from this guy's schemes as much as possible and be aware of the danger that this guy is wreaking on the world. And I want you to think about this. Like, thank God that Twitter is not truly the number one news source. But I want you to think about what it would mean if it were to have this guy having dictatorial control over that type of organization, to be able to control information and boost and pull the levers on world perception to that degree. That should make you go, that should make you have a crisis of faith. For, for real. And I, and I look forward to it. And as you said, if you're wrong, then you're wrong. And if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. Yes. Okay. So let's, so and I'm glad we're having this conversation debate. This is what you should, we should be doing debating the issue. So right. if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. And then they'll be proven in the thing and you as well. But I just want to tell you that that pilot that you talked about, uh, in fact, was a woman pilot, landed the plane safe, safely, despite the major malfunction with the equipment. Boeing has taken responsibility for that incident, saying that it was caused by a faulty door panel. So I'm not sure 
what that had to do with lowering the standards for pilots when it was a faulty. No, it's not lowering standards for pilots. It's, it's the, the incentive structure. Uh... Oh, dude, you got caught. That's what I said, by the way. Feeling kind of validated by that. Damn, maybe I should be, maybe I should consider becoming an interviewer. I, I believe that Boeing changed to uh, include DEI as, uh, as, a, as a fundamental executive incentive. Dude, come on. That's so funny to say. It's so fucking funny to try and blame Boeing's problems on DEI when they are currently the biggest piece of news that anyone knows about Boeing is that Boeing is currently involved in a massive lawsuit because a whistleblower pointed out that they were rushing for profit reasons that executives were rushing the designs of the Boeing 737 MAX. Actually wild. Dude is so good. His goose is cooked. These people require you to deny all of reality. And he has, this is the right wing of America right now. They are in complete reality denial. It's crazy to their own, to everyone's detriment. They're sitting here whining about black people and women being pilots while Boeing is like, we need to make 20 more dollars per second this year. The way we're going to do that is by calculatedly killing our passengers by putting out, uh, uh by putting out, uh, uh, planes that are, that, that we know are under tested and under prepared. That's my opinion, by the way. And you should check out if you don't, if you, if you think my opinion is interesting, that's my personal opinion. But if you, if you think my opinion is interesting, you should look up the actual publicly available information about what, uh, about why Boeing is currently being sued. You should look up the publicly available information about the fact that Boeing's the primary uh, whistleblower in the Boeing case just mysteriously turned up dead from suicide after telling his family members that he would never kill himself and if he killed himself, they should be suspicious. Cal the half gay with the $10 says, Hey mama, you're one of my favorite streamers. I've been waiting to support you for a while, but haven't been able to. Today is my birthday and I turned 23. Thank you for all you do. Thank you for supporting the show and very happy 23rd birthday, Cal. Thank you so much. I hope you have a great birthday. Anyway, let's continue. Um, so, but I, in my view, it should be purely about passenger safety. Okay, but do you understand how by saying just that standards are being lowered, that you're implying that they're being lowered because people are less skilled and less intelligent and you're talking about people of color and or women. Uh, he's not implying. Look, he, I'm, said I'm that. Saying we should... he said that. That isn't even implied. That is what he said. Not lower standards. But do you, you don't. That's it. I think everyone can agree that you can't, you shouldn't lower standards. Great. That's but cool. you're implying that they're lowering standards because of people of color or women, because someone is not a white male. You're saying that they're less skilled and less intelligent. That's what no, you're I'm saying. No, I'm not saying that. I'm simply saying that they are. Then why would they be lowering the standards? I don't know. Why are they lowering the standards? Just so you know, 5% of pilots are female, 4% are black. So you're, you know, you're talking about this widespread takeover of minorities and women when that's not actually true. I'm not saying there's a wide spread takeover. Well, you're saying that the standards are being lowered because of certain people. Um, and you, how do you, you don't believe in DEI, right? Do you not believe diverse in diversity, equity, and inclusion? I think we should be, uh, treat people uh, according to their skills uh, and their integrity, and that's it. Do you know that studies show? Studies show. Yeah, well, well we can look them up. Well, so your reaction to studies show and I understand, right? Because I always like to say, I always like to point to an exact uh, study, right? Sure. Something that is factual. It's the same thing when you talk about, well, let's see what the replies are on Twitter or on X. Yeah, so, so, I, I, so I, feel the same, I feel the same way about that. But this is what studies have shown and people will reply and they'll say that companies with more diversity and their leadership teams have reported higher innovation rates than those in, with, a lower, um, with lower diversity or low diversity. And they, they're better companies. 
And I feel like this. I feel like this interview in particular. This interview in particular. Uh, the last interview we watched, the uh, the 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 Wall Street one, um, the book summit or whatever it was called. I feel like that one uh, proved should have proved to the world that Elon Musk was off his goddamn rocker and had and has completely lost the plot. That he's just a a total uh, a t like loose tire on the highway type runaway train situation. Uh, but this one should prove that he is a fucking racist. Like undeniably, this one should prove that. The things that he said here and the ways that he's defended everything that he's done are is what a cowardly racist would do. Like everything here is an expose of just how racist this guy really is. I think it should be no one. This interview should should settle that question. They make more money. This whole idea about DEI, if you go woke or whatever, you go broke, that's not necessarily true. People with diverse leadership teams and diverse um, workers make more money and more innovative. Hi. Um, Thank you. Um, like I said, my view is that the, the only basis for promoting somebody should be uh, their skills, talents, and uh, their integrity, and that's it. I want to ask you about, there's a, there's a federal government, uh, EEOC, they are also currently involved in a lawsuit against Tesla that alleges that there's a history of widespread racial harassment against black Tesla employees, as well as a pattern of retaliation for speaking out. What do you say to that? Uh, well, uh, there's, I, I don't believe that is, that is true. Um, I think we've got a very good, uh, uh, like if, if you walk around the, the, te the Tesla Fremont uh, plant, I think it's a very good atmosphere. Um, in fact, I, I practically lived there for three years. Well, oh, that was me plugging in my controller so we can play Dark Souls 2 after this. Make the production work. Were uh, you aware, if you lived there, were you aware of such behavior? I never saw it. So you're saying that... I'm pretty sure that in that particular lawsuit, there are direct allegations with multiple witnesses against him. I could be misremembering. I'm not an expert on this lawsuit, but check the comments. You know, check the comments, guys. I'm pretty sure that in that specific lawsuit, a lot of the allegations of racism were directed at him. Just check the comments, guys. It's not true. It's not happening. Well, I mean, there's over 20,000 people. So you say, like, if there's over 20,000 people in one building, um, well, is everyone going to be, behave perfectly? No. Did I see any, any situations that I thought were uh, improper? I did not. Uh, let's talk about trans rights and the, the woke mind virus because you talk about that a lot. You write about that a lot. Oh on the boy, thing. here we go. Here we go. You have been deeply outspoken about the issue of trans rights. You posted trans rights. You uh, posted that pronouns and bio mean the woke mind virus ate your brain. Do you know what the term woke actually means? Oh, 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 let's do it. Um, it's come to mean a lot of things, but what it actually... Oh my what, God, he admitted it! Yeah, it means a lot of things. Yeah, let's do it, let's do it! Originally, it was meant to mean. It's just being aware of inequities in society. No, don't give him the answer! Don't give him the answer! No! No, Don Lemon, no! Make him, make him give us an answer! And being aware of facts and, and history. Yeah, I think it's come to be... I think, I think being aware of inequities in society is fine, of course. Um, but uh, trying to blame everything uh, on, on, trying to make everything a race issue is, uh, I think, a divisive and corrosive to society. Even as it relates to trans issues, which is what I'm... Yeah, great race or, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Doe. I love you too. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> That was okay. So I was, I, I was, I'm like, oh no, Don almost dropped it. But then Elon, Elon dropped it again because he asked about trans people, and Elon starts talking about black people again. By the way, once again, exactly what Adolf Hitler would have done. Exactly what Adolf Hitler would have done. I mean, sorry, exactly what a racist would do. Gender or whatever. You think blaming? You think that society blames everything on racism now? I blame a lot of things on it, and, uh, yeah. You think that's unfair? Yeah. Why? I think, I think we should, we should, we should, we should uh, 
not not make this a constant uh, subject. I think we need to move on. I think we just, you know, um, treat people like people. You don't agree that there's this country was founded on racism and founded on slavery and, and in many ways inequities. Um, that still continue on to this. I day. think every country uh, at, at that time, and I think even today, uh, was uh, extremely racist. Um, every country, um, and um, and even was, today. So then the answer there would have been you agree with him, but you can't say that because then that would be being woke. See, uh, uh, slavery was present in uh, about half of this country, um, and no, but no. not was. The that's at the time of the Civil War. Slavery was present in all of the country for most of the history. Not present in the in the uh, North. Uh, there was racism for sure, uh, but you know, the I, th I think we, we 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 want to look to the future rather than the past, um, and uh, instead of engaging in uh, constant rehashing of the past. Uh, because, it, it, in, in fact, if you look at history, if you study history broadly, everyone was a slave. Everyone. Yes. Well, okay. not everyone was a slave. No, but everyone was a slave. Okay, but <laughs> we, 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 are, we, are, we are all descended from slaves. Yeah. Well, all of us. Yeah. But, um, so, but it's just a question of when. Is it, was it more recent or less recent? That's it. Right. Um, so, the... But what, what future do we want? Sitting down, sitting down with a black guy and saying, you know, we were all basically slaves. You know, it's just a matter of when, you know. Wow, dude. Like I said, this interview ought to convince everyone. That is, that is, whoo, boy. Elon, Elon Musk rolling up to the interview being like, bro, we've all been, we are all slaves, bro. We were all, all fucking slaves. You know, last weekend I went in last weekend, I went and I visited my girlfriend and, and she made me dress up in, in leather and in a little skirt and clean the whole house. You know, I understand. I know what slavery's like. I know what it's like. Right, brother? Do we want, is this something we want to make a part of our constant dialogue forever? Or do we, do we want to say, like, let's just move on and treat everyone... Jesus uh, Christ. You know, uh, according to just who they are as an individual. I agree with you with that. That's the ideal. But what the evidence shows. Also, is that's especially rich coming from him and his fucking apartheid emerald mine family. That's just, oh God. Oh my fucking God. That, that's not what's actually in practice. I think we're doing better than anywhere else. That, that's true. I agree with that. But that doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean a lot to a whole lot of people who are able to take advantage of the opportunities that you are able to take advantage of simply because the color of your skin. What advantages what advantage did it do? My color of my skin give me. You are from, you grew up in apartheid South Africa, you fucking idiot. Oh my God, this, I, I didn't think that this interview was gonna be worse than the last one for him, but I actually think it might have been. I, obviously, unfortunately, this is pretty late into the interview, but that is a that is a terrible, terrible thing to say. That is a that looks so goddamn bad. It is so arrogantly stupid. There is no one except for frothing white supremacists who will think that that looks good or people who don't know anything about his family history, which you know what, if they don't, okay, you can be mistaken. But if anybody who knows even a drop about Elon Musk's family history, when he says, what, what benefits did I get from being white? Insane.
and also disgusting and also insulting. I don't even want to look at that clip. Well, there's a certain there's an ease that you have in society that you that many people of color don't. You were able to come to this country voluntarily. There are many people who were not able to come to the country voluntarily. There are people Actually, who I, came here as slaves. For me to come here. And there is a legacy of slavery that still continues on. There's a legacy of racism that still continues on in this country. That's and that's undeniable. Well, if 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 we keep talking about it nonstop, it will never go away. If we keep what? making it the central thing, it will never go away. Yes, as we know, talking about something is what makes it happen. Remember everyone, if you keep talking about that gangrenous ulcer uh, on your uh, inner thigh, um, you know, if you keep talking about it, it won't go away. You know, it, it's just, you know, the more you talk about it, d the, whatever you do, you shouldn't tell your doctor about it, especially when snakes of, of, of black and green uh, following roughly the pattern of your veins continues up the other parts of your leg. Don't tell them because telling them about it, talking about it is what makes it worse. Well, why do you believe that? I think I'm just making a simple statement of fact. Um, so I think, I think we want to get away from making everything a race or a gender or whatever issue. And just treat people like individuals. Richest man in the world says, I'm just so... Richest man in the world who openly admits to doing ketamine while playing fuckloads of, of, of Diablo 4 while being the richest guy in the world. Uh, says, you know, he's just tired of making it about race and gender, bro. He's just so tired of it. He feels trapped. You know, I'm just trapped, my man. I'm trapped. Do you have any desire to understand what many people of color and even trans people, um, how they feel about this country and how they're treated in this country? If they, if they say and they believe that they are treated a certain way in this country, why don't you believe them? You, you, you cannot have a situation where, where someone is, is a self-described victim and, and, they, and they just get to be that because that's how they feel. I think that that does happen. What? Isn't that what he's been doing basically his entire fucking, like the last two years of his career? Is him whining all the time about how he's the victim of Disney discrimination? In, in some cases, but not all cases. And I think that not understanding the history Thank you, of the Louis country, Boy. I think is- Louis Boy says, I love your whiny billionaire voice. I, I can't present it enough. I can't in, instill, I'm, I'm glad you love it, but I can't instill my whiny billionaire uh, voice with enough comical stupidity for it to, when I do my whiny billionaire voice, it should have the same effect uh, uh, as when somebody like Elon Musk talks, where you just are filled with a visceral anger. Is, um, is a, a real shame. Look, I've had, we should understand I've had incredible history, opportunities and other countries. I've had incredible opportunities as a person of color. Right. But I've also been very well. But I've also been discriminated against. And I know that I have. And I know that that's real. And for someone to say that that isn't happening, I should not, I should just move forward and not think about that and ignore the past is insulting. I'm not saying it. Don, you keep putting words in my mouth. I'm not saying it. It's, I didn't say it's that you happening. said it. I'm saying that we want to. We, we, as, we as a country should move beyond the questions of, of, of race and gender, and we should treat people like individuals and, and base our opinions on them, on the, you know. And you believe that's accomplished by telling people who, so you believe that the onus is on the people who are being discriminated against, not the ones doing the discriminating. This is such a stupid position. And this is, by the way, is not a mistake that, do, that like, uh, open racists fall into, believe it or not. Okay, some of them do because there are a lot of them are really stupid. But when you make the argument that we should move forward, that we should stop, we should treat people as individuals, then you have to go, well, there are people out there who are being racist, who are discriminating. 
they are doing, they are the ones breaking that rule, aren't they? The ones who are treating other people, not as individuals, aren't they the ones breaking that? Not the people going, hey bro, you just fired me from my job because I'm trans. You just fired me from my job because you have a problem with women. You just refused to hire me because you have a problem with black people. Don't you think that the person who's doing that thing should be the one who has to change? It's such a stupid argument. It's such a blatantly dishonest and weak argument. Uh, they're, they're, uh... Their, their, their character and their skills. I don't think that anyone will disagree with that. Exactly. All I'm saying is that that's not happening and is not equal for everyone. That those opportunities don't happen for everyone. And I am a living example that they don't. I know that they don't because I live it. You've been incredibly successful. I have been. And Again, a, a horrible, horrible look for the richest man in the world to sit here and talk to a, a black man about that, oh, you've been so successful. Why, you, when he just said, I have been discriminated against. I have experienced discrimination. And Elon goes, yes, but you're fine. You're fine. Jesus Christ. In spite of it all, but I, but I am, I know what I know. I've experienced what I've experienced. You haven't done that. And I cannot, um, I don't know what it's like to be from South Africa. I don't know what it's like to be a white man. I don't know what it's like to be a woman. I don't know what it's like to be a Latino mm -hmm. person. I don't know that. So I wouldn't speak for them and just say, you need to move on. That's not for me to say. I maybe I believe that the country, it would be great if the country could live up to that ideal. You think that everyone has the same opportunities in America, regardless of their background and eth ethnicity. Do you agree? You no, I don't that. think everyone has the same opportunities. Okay. So um, when you talk about, let's talk about trans rights. When you decided to, um, to talk about the, the trans rights movement, um, you said that it was a woke mind virus. Why do you believe the trans rights movement is a woke mind virus? What do you mean by woke mind virus? Woke mind viruses, um, when you... He is winding up for the biggest... The, he is charging up the biggest... I am Adolf Hitler! ...that we've seen in this entire thing. Watch it. The, he, is, he is the spirit bomb of Adolf Hitler particles is about to, is about to slam. I, I, would be, I would put money on it. You, you, you stop caring about uh, people's skills um, and their integrity and you start focusing instead on gender and race and other things that are different from that. Um, He's back I on think, race uh, again! The woke wine virus is fundamentally racist, fundamentally sexist, and fundamentally evil. So what he answered is that the trans rights movement is a woke mind virus because it it talks about gender and race and therefore is racist. Um, incredible. Incredible, Elon. Okay. And uh, we've got a little bit more time, so yeah, yeah, yeah. You choose your question. Okay, so, <laughs> okay, thank you for that. But uh, you, uh, I would appreciate you answering these. I think it's important that we're doing this. I think it's important to the to world, the world, to hear this, especially what's going on uh, in our country. Uh, the reason I ask you, looks, and there are a whole lot of things that people may be I have questions about when it comes to transgender people. Even people who are part of the LGBTQ sure. plus community have, have questions about that. But if you are a free speech absolutist, right? Um, and that is part of the First Amendment. Also, the freedom of expression falls under that First Amendment as well. So why can't people choose to identify with the gender that they feel comfortable with or with a, use a pronoun? Isn't that part of freedom of expression? Uh, I guess no, they can, they can ask others to do whatever they feel. They can, they can ask others to do anything. What, it, it's a different question whether they, whether they mandate that others do that okay. thing. Okay. Who's mandating let's, anybody? Let's talk more about free speech and for advertisers, right? Because- Wow. Well, I'll admit it. I was wrong. I thought that we were gonna get a much bigger Hitler particle bomb there. And instead it was actually a continuation of, this, of the same. I can own it. Look. 
look, I, I can own when I'm wrong. There was a slight misreading. I mistook him juddering to a stop and staring off into space as him charging up for a bigger statement when in actuality it was just a seizure of some sort. We're all wrong sometimes. You've witnessed it tonight. All, all this controversy, I, I believe, as you know, has made um, X less appealing to advertisers. About half of them have left the platform. You call advertisers that left X. Uh, dot com. He said there were oppressors. You've even gone as far as saying it publicly that they can go f themselves or go fuck themselves. Advertise if they're if they're going to pull censorship on the, on the company uh, before advertising, then uh, obviously I find that unacceptable. You find it unacceptable. Why is that not a form of of free speech? They are free to advertise where they want. They're not beholden to. They're not yes. obligated to advertise not on the next dot com. Right. So. How is that not free speech? The, they, they, that's, whereas the other platforms will censor on behalf of, of advertisers, the X platform will not. Okay. So, but you think it's, uh, you don't think it's okay for them not to advertise with or have their content or their advertisement next to something that is anti Semitic or. That is a different or, question. Uh, you, you, we, we, there's, there's, you can absolutely choose where, next to which content do you want your advertising to appear. Absolutely, of course. Mm -hmm. And we do, we have, I think, very good ad placement controls in this regard. Yeah. So you said if they kill the company, it's them. But does so what he just said there is that he thinks that his freedom of speech is being damaged because the advertisers don't appreciate his website enough. And because they choose to give their money to someone else, it's it's damaging his free speech. Did I understand that right? Doesn't the buck stop with you? I mean, you're on. I have to say, I, uh, choose your question carefully. There's five minutes left. Okay, but so is this the same the question you want to ask? The same question is you said you said that they are killing the company, but you're the head of the company. The buck doesn't stop with you. Wow, that really bothered him. I acquired X in order to preserve freedom of speech in America, the First Amendment. And I'm going to stick to that. And if that means making less money, so be it. So I have to be, listen, I, I'm just being honest, right? I'm not trying to, like, get you or anything. I was just surprised that you would blame other people for killing the company. I mean, you're the, I mean, when you say the buck stops with the president of the United States, regardless of what happens, right? So I, why would the, why would that question upset you? You seem upset by it, are you? I think you, and I'm not trying to upset you. The way, well, you are upsetting me because the way you're phrasing questions, I think is, is not cogent. Um, it, oh my God. It's not uh, what? Not cogent. Cogent. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, so, uh, the, if, 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 if given a choice where an advertiser is saying like, you have to censor all this content on the, on the platform, irrespective of where they're advertising appears, uh, then our ass will be like, look, you, you, you can choose where you want your advertising, what you want your advertising to appear next. I said the previous question bothered him and I was right. Next to, but you can't insist on censorship of the entire platform. If you insist on censorship of the entire platform, even where your advertising doesn't appear, uh, then uh, obviously we will, we will not uh, want them as an advertiser. So what, what would you say to advertisers to, who have left the platform or who are considering coming back or not coming back? What would you like to say to them? Well, first of all, uh, almost all of our advertisers are coming back to the platform. So it's a very short list of advertisers who are not coming back to the platform. Um, and uh, our advertising revenue is rising rapidly uh, and our subscription revenue is rising rapidly and I feel very optimistic about the future of the X Bible. Okay. Listen, I'm not, I'm, honestly, I'm not meaning to offend you. You're an intense person. Where does that intensity come from? I was born that way. And I had a tough childhood. Hey, Pepto Cakes. You did? So, yeah. How um, so? 
right, Wolfram Isaacson goes into it in the book, and, and we only have a couple minutes left, so all right, too long to, to describe. Um, so the one or two questions I can do, and then we'll have to call it. I, okay. Again, I don't mean to upset you. Why are you? You just. No, I, I have a whole room full of people waiting to meet with me. Okay. So we're just going over time. Okay. All right. I understand that. Um, so you, when you talk about, you said you were born that way. Is that, um, did you, you think that the way that you see the world has to do with your relationship with anyone, perhaps your, your father or someone in, in your family? It, I feel like. I feel like ending the interview in this way when he agreed to like a, a, a no holds at, at interview is like the one of the biggest mistakes. He comes off like he uh, like paranoid and suspicious and uh, like he's pissed off. And I feel like Don Lemon has been with one exception. I do feel Don Lemon kind of got him before with the these tweets are up on your platform right now he did kind of that's a little bit of a gotcha but but it's a, i think it's a fair i think it's a fair gotcha but it's still a gotcha but uh ending it like this is a is a is a certainly a decision Cer certainly a choice uh i don't know i think we're all affected by the people we grew up with uh, my aspiration is to uh do whatever it takes to extend the extend consciousness into the future. That's my goal, um, to make life multiplanetary as part of extending consciousness into the future. Has this, has, have the past few years and considering everything that's gone on, has it been difficult for you and your family life? It's been okay. So then how do you see your legacy, Elon? How, how do you see, how well, people see you I, I, in the- First of all, I say that the, Um, if I died knowing that I, that I did what was right or, or did my best to do what was right, and even if in the history books they said I did, did wrong, I would still feel okay about that. I care about the reality of goodness, not the perception of it. Um, I think we should view civilization uh, as tenuous, as fragile. Um, if, you, if you do study history broadly, you'll see that there's wait, a rising pulse. Wait, civil did I miss a question? Wasn't he just asked about his family life? Hold on, let me go back. I need to... So then, how do you see your legacy, Elon? How, oh, okay, how okay. I see... did miss a question. I missed the legacy question. Okay. The... How well, people see I, you I, in the... First of all, I say that the... Um, if I died knowing that I, that I did hey, what tipster. was right, or, or did my Hope best to do well. what was right, and even if in the history books they said I did, did wrong, I would still feel okay by. about that. I care about the reality of goodness, not the perception of it. Um, I think we should view civilization uh, as tenuous, as fragile. Um, if, you, if you do study history broadly, you'll see that there's a rise in both civilizations. They don't always go- I'm doing great. This has been a wild, uh, this has been a wild interview. Well, um, so we should do everything we possibly can to preserve uh, and, and extend civilization as we know it, yeah. um, and improve it um, to become more enlightened over time. And we- That's such a weird way of wording. I, I, I don't want to jump on that, but that is a weird, that is a weird wording. Uh, therefore, we want to address civilizational risks. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, we don't have, for example, demographic collapse, which is the case in a lot of countries. I'm sorry, what? I was right, but it just took a lot longer for him to charge up the fucking Hitler beam. I am Adolf Hitler. <laughs> Holy shit! Oh, I, <laughs> I was—I should have trusted in my former instincts. I should have trusted. Holy shit! <laughs> D demographic collapse, huh? Holy fuck, my man! He was like, just needed to make sure I did a little, uh, little goose stepping on the way out. For those who don't know, uh, d the concept of demographic collapse. 
demographic collapse is a neo-Nazi concept. I'm not kidding you. It is the idea, um, it is the idea that certain groups of people are, uh, usually what they will say, usually what the neo-Nazis will say is they will say that, uh, that porn and degeneracy um, has basically led white people into being weak and such that they can't reproduce to the same degree. Oh, and immigration is the other one they get mad at. Um, and that, that it's, it's led white people to being weak. And so now there is a massive and sudden demographic collapse among white people. It's actually insane that he would drop that at the end of this conversation as what he views as a civilizational risk. And by the way, I stand by, this is his most Hitler-esque moment of this entire interview. When you're asked, what is your legacy? And you say, I'm extremely concerned about saving civilization from demographic collapse. That could have been out of fucking the writings of Adolf Hitler. That is absurd. That is insane. Uh, just very low birth rate. Um, we, we want to avoid, obviously avoid World War III. Anything that is a civilizational risk. That's what I care about, civilizational risks. Um, how do we extend consciousness into the future such that we are able to better understand the, the nature of reality. Yeah. That's yeah. what I care about, that's my motivation. I know you have to go, if you'll just give me, a, uh, I'll do a rapid fire thing here. Is, if there, is there anything that you would change about um, anything that you've done in your life, in the past or recently? Um, I've made many mistakes over the years. If I had a time machine, I'd go back and fix them, uh, but I don't have a time machine. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. So that's it. And as Elon would say, you be the judge. Let me tell you something about this show. The conversation doesn't end just because the camera stops. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching The Don Lemon Show. Wow. Well, uh, that was a very strong interview from Don Lemon. Uh, a few things that uh, I wish that he would have done differently, of course. But... Dropping the demographic collapse as a civilizational risk is insane to me, uh, especially after everything else that he said. Um, yeah, I don't know. The, the wild thing about this is that um, I think this interview solidifies the fact, almost undeniably so, that Elon Musk is, uh, is, is a racist person. Um, but he's so cowardly about it that I don't even know if this is going to win him points with his current demographic or if they're just going to get pissed off, um, you know, that he granted ground because, uh, uh, at the end of the conversation, you know, um, he was just like, yeah, trans people can be trans. Just don't, you know, don't make me do it. Well, that's not the right wing position. That's not the, the position of the people that he was attempting to pander to. There is also another point, the, the fact of him getting sort of pinned into admitting that he has depression, that's not gonna fly well with his far right fans either. Wow, that is, uh, that is wild. Wow. Yeah. Um, there's not much else to say. I think Don Lemon got him. This is a very telling interview, and the way that he approaches issues is, frankly, deranged. Uh, he's clearly uh, completely disconnected from reality. Um, he is uh, unwilling to acknowledge and seems almost afraid uh, uh, of people perceiving him for what he is, which is far right. The, the talking points that he put out in this conversation were poorly delivered far-right talking points, saying that he thinks DEI is going to get people killed, uh, that he thinks that um, the sheer existence of, uh, you know, 
black pilots and women pilots is an, it, it, you know, implies that there must be lowering standards, saying that he believes demographic collapse is a societal, uh, a, a, sorry, a civilizational risk, uh, saying that he believes that the Democrats are opening the border to try and change the composition of the House of Representatives specifically, these are deranged. These are insane positions. Um, and yeah, uh, we shouldn't be afraid to say it. Uh, this guy's a nutbag. And uh, the fact that we have to deal with him is a indictment of our entire society. Uh, the fact that this guy has any power whatsoever is an indictment of our society. Uh, the fact that there's nothing uh, on any sort of institutional level that we've built up gigantic and powerful institutions and that none of them are able to check his uh, derangement in any meaningful way, at least. Okay, maybe some of the financial ones will. You know, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe some of his uh, financial institutions uh, might be able to check some of his nonsense. You know, because financial institutions really hate it when you rip off other rich guys. And, uh, you know, the rich guys might get revenge on you. Uh, but other than that, uh, this guy uh, turning a platform, uh, a platform that was deeply flawed to begin with into an even more flawed and specifically uh, radicalizing platform and then taking their talking points and pushing them as far as they can go uh, is indictment of our world. And it should leave us all with a deep sense of distrust for... Uh, the power structures that be. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this segment, make sure that you're subscribed. Make sure that you press like down below. And of course, leave it in the comments. You know, if there's facts that I missed, if there's truth that I missed, bro, fucking put that down in the comments. Tell me. I want to. The comments will will let us know. Think for yourself, and think for me. In fact. <laughs>